Last time on Roll With Me, The Ties That Bind. Asmo, Denir, Wolfgang, and Garrick each received a most unexpected summons from the king himself. Having to leave home for the second time in as many moons, the team ventured southward toward the capital of Dragon's Rest. On their arrival, they were greeted by Venariel Wizzlestein, an attendant to the Silver Lady of the Royal Family. She toured them around the city and prepared them for their audience with the royal siblings. As they made their audience, they finally met the three dragons who came to rule these lands. Hrish, the bronze behemoth and leader of the Empire's military, Tia, the Silver Lady, and Bahum, the golden immortal emperor. The king praised them for their efforts, but was the The king praised them for their efforts, but was interrupted by Xander Crowley, a grieving and scorned nobleman. Brushing off the interruption, the king pried for the, king, uh, for the team's first-hand knowledge of the events at the Wall. He also relieved them of the mysterious gems that had found their way into their possession, for which they were compensated fairly. However, upon exiting the palace, a pickpocket relieved them of their newly acquired funds. Chasing, their, uh, chasing them down an alley, they found a mysterious woman who ushered them into a secret room. The woman revealed herself as Ven. And Tia, the Silver Lady, made her formal introduction as she descended a staircase. Venariel sort of stares at the two of you. Oh, uh, uh, pardon. Allow me to present my lady, Tia, mistress of coin and keeper of the peace here at Dragon's Rest. Thank you, Ven. I must apologize for the manner in which you've been summoned here, but discretion is hard to come by in this city. You say summoned, but it feels more like tricked. Asmo slowly backs up to the door they just walked in. He tries to jimmy and open it up a little bit. It doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, it's, God. It starts patting it down. Wait. Yeah, it's just a wall. I assure you that won't be necessary. And again, I am sorry. As I stated previously, discretion is rather hard to come by, and this is important. But before I get to why you're here, I'm sure you have many questions, so please ask what you will, and I will answer what I can. Yeah, are we getting our money back? In due time, she smiles at you. <laughs> <laughs> Just still, like, glowing eyes, angel wings. That lasts for a minute, by the way. Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, the, the, to the two of you, uh, Osmo and Denier you notice that there's kind of a translucent shimmer of what looks to be wings on the back, like coming straight from the back of Wolfgang. Though his clothes don't seem to be tattered, they appear to be just kind of connected, almost spiritually. And his eyes are glowing white, although you've seen that before when he's tried to, you know, sense magic and such. Denier's going to inch over slowly, bit by bit, towards uh, Wolfgang. And he is going to paw lightly at one of his wings. As you brush them, your your hand feels like your hand sort of goes through them, but it feels warm as it does so, almost as if they aren't really there. Hmm. Well, you obviously brought us here for some reason. Why? Hmm. Straight to the matter at hand, I suppose. <clears throat> I have a question for you. She looks at you, Denier. Denier looks up. Aye? How long have you been holding on to this gem? And she holds out, you know, your gem. The crystal that you found in the temple so long ago. The moment he sees it, an immediate, an immediate look of pain and sorrow appears in his eyes. And he chokes up for just a second before seven years the last thing I have of home Ven's eyes go wide impossible to have had this gem of that size in your possession for that long even those in the palace guard Venariel please young tabaxi you must be either impeccably strong of will or pure of heart to have bore no ill effects from your exposure and it is for that reason that I must ask a favor. I require that each of you deliver a message to me to the capital of Mitternacht. The 
Oh, sorry, what was that again? <laughs> Mitternacht. Oh, Nick, you. you, you... It's German. I write... <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna need you to spell that out for me. <laughs> I don't even know if I can, frankly. I oh kinda... God! Why would you be placed <laughs> after that? Then I heard meat phonetics. And rocks. Use I heard phonetics. Meat and, ro meat and rocks. Is it just huh? like? <laughs> Me ter nacht. <laughs> just taking a guess. M e t e a r n o c t. Sure. Isn't that a Rammstein lyric? Yes. <laughs> why didn't you call it Rammstein? I know how to spell that. <laughs> Do you Rammstein? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Venariel pr uh, produces from her robes a silver scroll that seems to have the binding of an Ouroboros, a dragon consuming its own tail, and presents it to you, Denir. Denir reaches out. He takes it. He looks over it curiously. And he slips it into his robes. Thank you. Yes. I have many ears north of the border, but none whom would do this for me, I should say. That uh, it makes me a little bit curious as to why going here is not worthy of your usual guy's time. Hi, by the way, Esmil. Mm, charmed, she kind of nods her head at you. <sighs> he smiles. Now what exactly is the payment for this job? Well, you will be compensated by the crown, of course, although this is unsanctioned. Unfortunately, we cannot use our own people as... Well, let's just say the nobles are already quite weary of the crown, and the unfortunate spreading of the news that these gems contain great power only fuels that distrust. I would say. You say these things corrupt people over time. It would appear as such. Your we king's had... collected quite a few of them. Yes. And I have been keeping close eye on him, and we have limited our own exposure. However, those that have been left to guard the vaults themselves have sometimes found themselves, how should I say, at wit's end. They lose it. They yes. snap. And that is why no one is allowed to Go anywhere near the vault. Tell me, how much do you know of the history of this country? I have a negative. I have a negative one. Go, on go, ahead, go ahead and roll your history checks. Uh, Thirteen. Eight. Shut up. Nineteen. Ah, nineteen from Denier. Makes sense for somebody who spends their time in the library. Denir, you know that this land was settled after a great war with the North. Uh, there was a massive cataclysm amidst the battles that took place that seemed to morph the land itself, but most of the reports are either unverified or simply not kept very well in record. And I take it these gems were once part of a bigger item that was used during the Great Wars? To be quite honest, I am not entirely sure myself. You see, the war between the North and the South was brought about by an undead scourge. The elves, they were decimated by the plague. So my brothers and I led a campaign to the center of the continent. We fought in the great wooded belt that stretched from the overgrowth to the east all the way to the mountains in the west. During this campaign, a thick, horrific miasma seemed to spread through the forest. The cause was unknown, but it brought with it a great corruption. My father flew in to assist us as the creatures of the forest became disfigured and monstrous. Even some of the less stable soldiers began to turn on each other, and from within the fog rumbled a behemoth of a beast. This beast was bigger, greater than any, anything we had seen before. Even, 
even in our more majestic forms, this thing still dwarfed us. Its mouth, like a bottomless cavern, gated by teeth the size of an average man and sharper than our finest blades. My brothers and I held the beast off as best we could while father and a small platoon ventured deeper in to try to find the source of this corruption to put an end to it. For hours, we tried to hold the monster back as it consumed our soldiers by the handful and swatted off nearly anything we could throw at it. Then came the cataclysm. It began as a rumble in the ground, followed by a massive gust of wind. The land began to give way as a massive force toppled everything to the ground, my brothers and the beast included. My brothers and I were barely able to get away as the land began to crumble and sink with the beast and our army along with it. And all that was left of now, all that's left there now, is known as the Maw. Only two returned from the center. My father and one man, both gravely injured. The man held with him the same type of gem you carry with you and uttered only a warning of its power as he passed. Father, meanwhile, hasn't spoken since and has remained under the care of those at the monastery. We attempted to learn what we could about the gems, but have only come to a few conclusions. One, they tend to react to each other's presence. Two, they are very, very powerful. And three, they are as powerful as they are dangerous. And four, that they cannot be destroyed by any means that we have come by. There were reports that night after the cataclysm of streaks of light shooting across the sky. We believe that's where the remaining fractions of this gem ended up. And somehow, and they found their way to you. Well, to them. <laughs> he points kind of at the two of them. Hmm. Quite. <sighs> now, you will be compensated, and of course, there is a secondary need for this venture. You won't be simply delivering a message. We also need information... How did the child that made it into that camp, how did he bypass the wall? How did he get around it? How did he get in? I assume that will be your path northward. And furthermore, should you head north, you are certain to find other shards. We request that when you do, you return them to us for which you will also be compensated for information and for, well, the shards. I have a theory how, as to how he may have gotten into the wall. Please, my scouts have other thoughts, but go ahead. On one side of the wall, there is a passageway that leads directly into the heart of the court. You may have used that to get in. Easily maybe enough just, undetected. You know, with, all due, with all due respect, Denir, maybe he just walked up and asked to come in. He was almost convincing, even for us. Fair enough. That does seem to line up with the reports we received from the other sole survivor of the company up north. He claimed that there was a commotion at the front gate as he was staring off at the land bridge to the north. Before he could figure out what it was, they... People at the front gate had already ushered somebody into the base. Next came chaos, and, well, you know the rest. So he's from north of the Maw. The kid. That is what we believe. Well, I got this. Pull out the I, I pull out the symbol. This hmm. was found on him. I brought it with me. Maybe the silver lady it. holds out her hand. Nah, Oswald just shrugs and hands it to her. As you uh, reach towards her, she, like, her skin seems to emit a bit of a coldness to it. Mm. I, I feel it? Yes. Oof. Big oof. 
Yes. This does not belong to a family down here, though this is certainly a noble crest. I am unfamiliar with the families to the north, but my guess is you will find more information there. Uh, Asma holds out his hand. All right, I'll keep an eye out for it. Yeah, she hands it back to you. It seems much colder to the touch now. Yeah, you're a cool lady. She gives you another small smirk. Asmo smirks back and winks a little bit. She gives no reaction to that. Why? Okay. <laughs> Why not? Why not? So, when are we supposed to go here? Exactly. Well, preparations for your travel will take some time. I believe tomorrow evening would be the soonest that the Wizzlesteens would be able to transport you. I believe Venariel's father will suffice for the job. Yes, my lady. She bows. You are more than welcome to make audience with who you wish around town and spend your time accordingly. And should you desire a more permanent residence, I think in your absence we can arrange something. Like a townhouse? Like a, like a house in a town? So to speak. Mm. Never, never had a house of my own before. That's crazy. Shocking. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the boy, he... He seemed to draw his power from not only the jewel, but from another. Um... Uh, one that I have come across some experience with in the past. Have you ever heard of one called the Bleeding God? I can't say those particular words have ever struck me as such, no. However, it has been noted that in the past that these crystals might have some form of link to each other outside of just acknowledging their presence. Yes. The, whenever I first touched the crystal, I found mine in a in a temple on my island. And the moment I touched it, before everything went black, I saw a visage before me of a tall, chalk-white tree, old, gnarled, but blood seemed to seep from the trunk and from the branches of the tree. Hmm. The boy confirmed my thoughts and he confirmed that this has something to do with the bleeding god if not the bleeding god itself well whatever this bleeding god may be it may very well have been what brought about the cataclysm unfortunately father has been short on words and well the only other surviving member didn't exactly survive for long I see I was sitting there just, just look, look, eyeing one of his daggers. So, Mr. Wings, he says over uh, to Connor's I, character. I assume, uh, I assume that's me. Are you okay being away from your dad, your son, for, for this amount of time? <sighs> Not really. But if I'm being compensated... And I suppose it's better that I build up enough funds to make sure he's got a good life. Well, aren't you a swell dad? And jump off the barrel I've been sitting on and just land on my feet. Alrighty. Is there anything else we should know? Looks like we're all in agreement. We Speaking of funds, year. if we're going on a trip for you, I'd imagine we'd need to stock up. Oh, yeah. So our money, if you please. Uh, yeah, Oswald just kind of rubs his fingers together. Gimme, 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 gimme. She nods and uh, motions to Venariel, who walks over to that barrel you've been sitting on, Osmo, pries it open, and pulls out three bags, each containing 500 gold. Ooh, Ben. Mm. I've never held this amount of gold. That was mine. <laughs> Shift the eyes. Mi no Mr. Puzzles. Connolly? Yes. Your family. They 
have served the Empire greatly for the past many years. We were sad when you left the town. Left isn't the word I'd use. Your father took you when you were quite young, as I recall. I. You have our continued gratitude. I do not know yet whether or not the ember that blooms within you will spark into an inferno or simply peter out like a lot of your clan, but... Eyes near a real good when she says that. <laughs> the fact that these stones and these individuals have found themselves in your presence is hopeful. Make Thank no mistake. Make no mistake, your highness. We don't do what we do for any empire. We do what we do for the sake of the world and its people. Of course. She kind of nods. She turns right. to leave as the uh, bricks start to rumble behind you as they begin to open up out back again. Denier looks up from uh, batting at Wolfgang's wings and he gives her a respectful bow as she leaves. She's not paying attention. Still has to be polite. Venariel just kind of stands there with you. So... Any, uh... And anything I can be of assistance? Asmo is like eyeing up his new sword he got. By the way, what is the sword he was given as a as a prize from them? What does it look like? I guess it count, it counts as a short sword in the game. But uh, what does it look like? Yeah, it's a pretty fancifully decorated cutlass. It's got some gems along the scabbard. It's very familiar to the one that you have uh, that belongs to Mr. Crowley's son, or Mr. Crowley at this point, I guess. Mr. Crowley. It seems to be a symbol of the crown's thanks, I guess, for uh, duties to the Empire. Well, he, like, replaces the, one of his regular short swords with a fancy one, just straps it onto his back. You can tell me where the nearest place we can buy some potions are. That'd be handy. Well, there's my grandfather's shop, Talos and Timry's. Um, beyond that, there's an apothecary down the street. They carry okay. some ingredients and lesser used potions. Mm. Rubs his chin. Uh, I think I'm going to go there first. I'm going to swing by Meat House again. Oh, it was so good there. <laughs> it is quite Does splendid. Our... Does our thing we were given still work for tonight? Yes, so long as you stay within the capital, you are yes. free to use it as you see fit. You are our guests here. For, is it forever? Uh, unclear. Oh, we'll stress test that. I would suggest just that you just imagining that. Just imagining that whole pig he ate. Oh. Uh, I would suggest that you send word to the hotel that we're staying at, just in case. Well, of course. They they know to... They knew they'd be having you for at least a few days. I was referring to the cleaning crew. Oh. Was there a problem? Slowly pro look at Asmo. Ain't no problem. They make their salary. They earn their salary. Quite. She says, kind of staring awkwardly. Ugh. Well, if you, uh, if you need me, I will be at my family's home. Uh, oh, she reaches into her pocket and plucks out a rock with a rune on it. Uh, present this at the door and you'll be able to get in. Get in for where? Uh, to her family's home, the spire in the middle of the town. Ooh. Oh, oh okay. Uh, sorry, out of, out of character, why do we have to go there? Do we need to go there or did I miss something? They're taking us uh, out of yeah, town. Yeah, they're, they're the ones taking care of the passage for you. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, don't leave a lady waiting, take it. 
Denier. Denier reaches out for the stone. He takes it. I recommend that you take this time to decide uh, exactly what your cover will be. Those that travel north, typically, typically they're looking for some form of adventure or escape. I don't know what it is that you would like to travel under the guise of, but please decide that amongst yourselves. It'll probably make the trip easier. Anyway, um, I got stuff I got to do, so she just kind of, like, holds her arms out towards the uh, exit of the room. That's a cue to go, Denier. Come on. Uh, Asma pushes Denier. All right, all right, I'm going. And I keep a firm hold on my coin purse. A firm hold on my coin purse. Bye. She says as she waves. Farewell. Uh, I'm guessing uh, you're leaving as well, Wolfgang? Yeah. I, I right. dispel my radiant soul and I uh, head out as well. Yeah, as, as you walk out, the bricks begin to rumble and close behind you again. So, you're free to go about the town as you see fit. So, uh, I just want to sit me and goes, So, what are the, what's the over-under where a couple of suckers about to go down for their shenanigans? Probably. Or they need uh, something done. The other kingdom knows all their men, and they need somebody that's not known. Probably somebody that's expendable. Yeah, but uh, Wings here is super famous, apparently. Some special family that left town. Snake. Look over at Wolfgang. Hmm? Snake, I was, I was chatting with, I was talking to you. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that? In your own little world, huh? Just thinking about things. I'm not really sure I trust them with all those crystals. Well, it's going to be hard to really not. But the problem is there are a couple of dragons with an army. So, you know, it's theirs. <laughs> the best thing you can do if you're really nervous about it is go do work this job. Make us all some money. And you might find out an information or two to ease that conscience of yours. Besides, that's, a, that's what I'm doing. That's good. Now, apparently there's some shop where I can get some potions. That's good. Let's I've been thinking that. about something, and I might be able to help out on that front. I've heard tale of a spell. It's a common, it's a relatively, from what I understand, a common spell. But you can use it to conjure a healing potion. It's not as effective as a normal one, but you can summon a healing potion to be used. Mm. I'm tempted uh, to look into it to see if it, if any of the shops here have a scroll of it. Oh, good. Keep your eyes open. Trust me. Never have enough potions. Alright, um, are you guys good to walk somewhere? Yeah, you've been yeah. walking through the town as you've been talking. Uh, let's go to that apothecary. Alright, you find your way down to the shopping district. It leads you past the meat house. The ah. smell is just killing you. As there's, there's, there's something slow roasting and amazing do, in there right do, now. Do I see Pig the Cook doing anything? Uh, he's inside. He's, he's, he's out back in the smoke pit. Oh, okay. Yeah, as you walk by, you see a, a small sign that just seems to read like, you know those donut shot, like places that just say donuts? It's yes. just a place that says apothe apothecary. Ooh, boy, in a mini mall? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, Aspen just walks in. Ding, 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 ding. Mm, hello. There's a wrinkly old something sitting there looking at you. How wrinkly? Very wrinkly. Enough that you can't discern gender. You think it's human, though. How, yeah. how small? Pretty shriveled, you know, like, they're, they're definitely not getting up. They're just kind of crumpled in a chair at the edge of the shop. How's it going uh, there, shopkeep? Name's Asma. What's yours? Uh, my name's Jeffrey Jefferson. Also just nods. It's got alliteration that works. Now, uh, I've been looking for a place to take all my business to. You know? Uh, now, how, how, are you a busy man? Are you a busy man? Kind of looks around. 
Uh, well, we've got a customer today, so yes. Well, I tell you right now, you have the rare treat, Mr. Jeffy, of yes. having Esmo be one of your current clients. That's I'm looking wonderful. For, I'm looking for some potions. Oh, absolutely. I'm looking for some potions. What do you got on tap? Well, I have healing potions. Uh, that I've, works. I've got these. And he kind of lifts up like a little purple vial. Those will put a pep in your step. Yeah. What kind of pep? How, how peppy are we talking this step you're getting? Mm, pretty peppy. I will say back in my day, I used to paint the town red with them. <laughs> oh, uh, how long ago was that? Like 10, 500 years? <laughs> I cannot remember. Ooh, longer than that. Well, I'm just curious. Uh, what do we got? What's the going price here for... Uh... The potions, then, uh, for the healing potions, exactly. Well, for the, the, the healing potions over on the wall, yeah, I'd say I could sell them for about uh, five gold apiece, maybe. What? Seriously? Five gold apiece? <clears throat> okay, then. Uh, well, uh, you see, back in my day, we used to be able to get them for a silver, but inflation and all of that, you know. <laughs> Abs, ab, no, absolutely. I'll take ten. <laughs> drop down fifty gold. That. Uh, you drop down fifty gold. You notice that he only has like five potions on the shelf, though. Oh, I'll take the five. Very well. Here, I'll throw in one of these for, for ten more. He puts out the purple potion. It's really peppy. Oh, thank you. Okay, ten gold for this. Yes. And then, then, then that, the... that, com that comes to 25, 35 gold. Okay, that's 35 gold then. You're the man. Uh, snake man, actually, but that's okay. What? Where's the snake? Uh, it's, it's in your boot. Oh, no. I thought I removed them this morning. Uh, he begins to kind of crumple down. I take, I take, I leave the gold I and I take the, I take the potions. I smack Asmo upside the head. Be a fucking ass. Be, be an ass or stop being an ass? Stop being an ass. Is I there a donkey in the shop now? <laughs> no, but there is an Can ass. Can you tell it to wait? I'm trying to remove my boots. There's nothing. No, sir, I was joking. It was a jape. Oh, oh, oh you're, you're a card, you. Oh, thank you so much. All right, guys, I got everything I wanted. Yeah, by the way, patience. my boy, I can't help but notice when you set it, set down the gold on my counter, that ring of yours is quite fascinating. Oh yeah, this? I show off the one that has that effect. I don't know quite yet. Yes. Oh, uh, what, 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 what can you tell me about it? Well, hold on, let me put on my bifocals. He pulls I'll out these, like, giant, like, goggle-looking glasses that make his <laughs> eyes look like three times the size. Boink, boink! Well, it certainly is magical. Let's see here. Gonna give wow. him an arcane roll. Damn, all right. Yes, yes, these runes, I recognize them. Yes, my old rival used to weave runes like these back in the academy. Oh. Yes, this, these particular runes are used to ward off attacks, specifically from the, 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 uh, the, the melee variety. Mm. It, it appears that if you should so choose, you could perhaps activate its effect. For yourself and protect yourself from the attacks of others if you should find yourself in such a dangerous situation. Okay, out of character, what does that translate to, though? It is a uh, ring that, you know, you can use a bonus action to use Blade Ward, which oh, will, wow. uh, yeah, that'll give you resistance for exactly one attack's worth of uh, bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage that is non-magical. Damn, I, ooh, okay, I'll take that. That's that's good, I like that. Yeah, abjuration is pretty good. 
That is that is handy for me. Okay. Yeah, you have to you, you have to use your bonus action in order to uh, activate it though. Okay, that's fine. I'm I am very much okay with that. That's cool. Oh, thank you so much for telling me. No problem. I'm not entirely sure how often it can be used, but that that appears to be the gist of it. Hmm. Well, thank you so much, sir. As a matter of fact, here you go. I tip him one additional gold. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Well, I would, I would have to buy an extra flower for the missus tonight. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. All right, guys, I'm done. Thank you so much, sir. You have a pleasant day. You guys want to do anything? I got mine. Yeah. Wolfgang, you do you have up? any business here? Uh, is there anything else besides the potions, the healing potions and the pet potions? Uh, in the area, there's materials that seem to be used for alchemy. Um, are you, if you're looking for anything specific, I can roll to see if he has it. Uh, no, just, just, just checking around early. Um, is there an alchemy kit that he has, possibly? Mm, let's see. I was going to ask that myself. It looks like he has one, but it's really old and missing some pieces. Mm. You can't cut corners when you're doing alchemy, uh. I'll pass on that. All right, so you have uh, five potions of... Uh, five minor pe healing potions and a mystery potion. Oh, boy, five minor healing. Okay. Don't worry, out of character, I will be sharing those if the situation arises. I was just hoarding them. No worries. Five minor healing potions. All righty. Um, excuse me, sir. Um, do you happen to have any scrolls, any kind of... Uh, components for spells, or perhaps that alchemist mm. kit that you have, I'm interested in. Magic itself was never exactly my strong suit. Uh, I, I was a bit of a chemist back in the day. Uh, however, the, the, the alchemy set that you're looking for back there, I, I know it's quite old, but it served me well in my youth. I think I've lost a few pieces here and there, but if it should suit you, I would gladly part with it for 75 gold. Well, it is... I know that it is precious to you. I realize that it has such memory to you, but you have... I don't have many of those. But you did at one point... And you huh? used it to become a master alchemist. I did? Alchemist. Oh, that's fanciful. So I ask you this. Would it not be better to pass along your beginning tool to those that want to begin the craft themselves? To pass on knowledge to the next generation? Maybe I want a you, I, cheaper? I want you to roll your persuasion, a a persuasion attempt against this doddering old man. Fifteen? By Jove, you're right. Fifty gold. You're a kind man, and I will pay him the fifty. All right, you have an incomplete alchemy set for fifty gold. Hopefully it'll do what I needed to do. It'll be with relative, uh, not, not full-on disadvantage, but you will have penalties to it mm -hmm. when you're trying to use it. Uh, I just need it for a, a, a spell component. All right. And how much are the, the the pep potions, you said? Oh, I only brewed the one, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, I was looking forward to using it myself one of these days, but I realized that that time has long since passed for me. I can try to craft another one for you if, if, if you are so inclined. It will just take me a little bit of time. It's quite all right. We shan't be staying in town long, so I will come back to you whenever we return back to town. That is a shame, but thank you so much for stopping by and making this old man's day a little bit brighter. No, sir. Thank you. And Denier oh. bows slightly and walks past Wolfgang and leaves. He kind of nods in a very shaky sort of yes way. Do we leave the store? That's up to you. Are you leaving? Uh, you got anything you want there, Connor? Uh, I think I'm good here. Uh, right, good as day. you 
Have a good day, sir. As we leave, I just turn. Oh, man, what's the over under him gonna die by the time we get back? I think he might die before we even walk down the street. Where are we going? <laughs> the faster man, the man standing behind you. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what do you mean? Where are we going? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were friends. <laughs> Place a hand on his on his shoulder and smile gently. Here's, here's the thing. You've had so many customers today. What if another comes and you're not in your shop because you're walking with us? My goodness, I can't take a break. It's it's a work day after all. Never know when people need that. Ma- he says as he starts shambling back over to his bench. Oh, I wipe away the snake sweat. Good, good save. Holy crap. You have a good rest of your day, man. You too, my new companions. In your waves as they walk. His name is Jeff. I Jeff shudder Jeffries. for the day when Jamat get that gets that hold. I don't even know if that was a gnome. That could have just been a lady, for all we know. God. My goodness. Um, oh, where, where are we going now? Do you guys want to go somewhere else? Well, let's see. You guys can pretty much do whatever you want. I mean, you still have that cut list from the Crowleys. You still have... Uh, you can visit uh, Ven's home. You can just uh, do Crow- whatever around town. But the Crowleys live way out of town, though. No, they don't. What? Yeah, they live up past uh, the Phoenix Perch over on the row opposite of the palace. You're thinking oh. the farmland that we were past. This uh, I was thinking, yeah, they lived out there. Okay. Uh, shit. Want to go, pay, him, know, wanna go pay Mr. Crowley a visit? Oh, he looks like a fun person. I eventually a... want to stop off and see if we can get uh, some spell components so that I can look further into Asmo's ring and uh, see if oh. I can pick up some scrolls and paper. Not bad. Okay, so that would that would be uh, Talos and Timrys is where you'd look for something like that. Out of character, and I don't mean to, to meta game at all here. Would it be possible to like, uh, if I go, would would should all three of us go to the Crowleys or should? I am not going to tell you how you act. I will simply state that it is easier when you're all together. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I pull up the Crowley sword. It's a, it's a giant goddamn magnet, so let's uh, I'm gonna go drop this off. It's a trouble magnet, I swear to God. So let's it, go do that. Yeah, it'd probably be better if, if we were all in a group. Uh, no you offense, have... but you seem kind of shady. Okay, I'm pretty sure I paid full price for my stuff, and you haggled. The kind old man. Okay. We start walking towards the Crowley estate. You begin to walk up towards the noble district. You pass by the Phoenix Perch. Uh, You can go in there to drop off anything that you might want to drop off on your way up there. Uh, As you enter the noble district, you walk up the streets, and each of these houses are quite unique, but each in their own very lavish way. One of the homes seems to be covered entirely by vines and moss and has exquisite topiary sculptures all around the property. Another seems to be plated completely in gold. Uh, Finally, you arrive at the Crowley Estate, a Victorian manor with embellishments of platinum and the the fork-horned cow skull that you've become rather familiar with hangs above a mighty iron gateway. As you pass through the property... On your way to the front door, you pass by many exotic trees and a fountain containing a statue of an elf that appears to be firing a water, uh, firing out the water from its palm into the air like a geyser. <sighs> Finally, you approach the heavy Ima- open imagine. doorway. Oh, it's just oh, like, Asmo says, imagine if they took all this wealth and gave it to people so they could all live better. That would be such a better use of that. Sounds strange coming from you, Asmo. Uh, well, when you grow up with little, it makes a lot of sense. As you approach the front of the house, that seems there's a several gargoyles just kind of hanging off the side, just staring out like little guardians of the people inside. Denier reaches out and he touches uh, Asmo's chest with the back of his hand. That was what a selfless the... thought. What? I'm proud of you. Selfless thought? No, 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 no. I get a portion of that. <laughs> and I also I also did a slightly higher portion, you know, for my trouble. And now you're thinking uh, like a nobleman. 
Yep. Hey. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's how it starts. That's how it starts. It just. Uh, are we at the door? Yeah. As you approach, there is a heavy oaken double door bearing knockers depicting a bull with a ring through its nose. I just grab it and go. Well done. Yeah, Thank, you. Sound Thank you. A few moments later, the door slides, like opens up inward, and you're greeted with a man who appears to be wearing some dark vestments and a uh, pair of shaded spectacles. Hello? How can I help you? Ah, hello there. I am Asmo. Uh, these are my compatriots, uh, Wolfgang engineer and i i come to you with a heart heavy as i uh have recently come into possession of something that i believe belongs to kind of gestures to the house a little bit you all i see is the master expecting you oh no and he probably should uh, i don't know how he's gonna take this and no I but can... he saw us earlier today yeah he knows of us I'm afraid the master doesn't have many memories of earlier today, but I shall go inform him. What should I say this is regarding? Regarding his son's. I uh, see. His son's weapon, yeah. Um, this. And I just pull out the, the blade wrapped in a blanket and just go, I show it off. Hmm. Very well. Please wait here while I go inform the master. Uh, we wait kinda outside. Closes, yeah, he kind of closes the door on you. This is awkward. This is really awkward. <laughs> Just a slap, like uh, Asmo slap squats in front of the door. Yeah, maybe let maybe try letting me do the talking while uh, this whole thing's going on. Oh no 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 no! The one who found it get a reward. I'm willing to share a little bit. Oh no! Go okay. ahead. Don't let the former noble talk to the no current noble. And the reason why you're a former noble, whereas an I just maybe a future noble. The door reopens sometime later. Please enter. Okay. Wipe off my feet before I go in. <laughs> Good call. Thank you uh, very much. Man. The yeah. interior is very nicely decorated with dark wood walls and burgundy leather furniture. Tapestries of silk hang from the walls alongside decorative armaments and oil paintings depicting who you're assuming to be uh, other members of the Crowley family line. Uh, 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 this is a nice-ass place. Mm. Mm -mm. This way, please. The uh, attendant sort of leads you up a grand staircase, and you hear shattering coming from a room up at the top. Perception check. Go ahead. Nine, huh? Yeah, <laughs> no. no it, yeah, they, there certainly was some glass shattering. Uh, the master is in a bit of a mood today we noticed well i would be too he walks up to a door kind of at the left of the hallway and gives it a knock the fuck is it it's the uh it's the people i just mentioned sir right right let them in he opens the door and you see a very lavish office with a oaken desk with gold around its trimmings. Uh, there is a oil painting hanging on the wall that appears to be of the man you met earlier. And there are several knives thrown into it. <laughs> Sitting at the desk in the corner, you see a man just kind of holding his head. It's the same man. His clothes just as raggedy, his hair a bit more tussled. <sighs> Is, is it Crow is it is it uh is yes it, uh... it is Xander Crowley just kind of sitting there seems he's nursing a headache do we notice the knives in the picture of himself yes oh boy what is the desk mm. made out of uh it's made of oak it seems to be lined on the top with a bit of uh burgundy fabric we can't really mm. tell if it's leather or not and the uh... trimmings along the side of it are made of gold uh asmo walks up uh, Mr. Crowley. Yes. Uh, Wait. I... I think I remember you. Yes, we were, uh, present for your discussion with the, uh, Immortal King. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Oh, that's right, that's right. The, uh, the heroes of the North. Um, 
I am no. I'm sorry for my uh, behavior. I I am appreciative of your efforts up there. It's just very bitter for me. Well, if uh, I can help out in any way with that, uh, I place the sword. I place the sword in the blanket down, and I unfurl it on his desk. <laughs> Found something up north while we were up there, and uh, was told that this belongs to you. So uh, it does indeed. Yeah. So uh, I just kind of tap it a little bit. <laughs> he picks it up. I gave it to him for luck. Kind of looks over it, like some tears kind of entering his eyes. Aswell puts his hands in his pockets. Since you are the heroes that were up there, I will take it at your word that you simply found it, and you have my gratitude. Uh, forgive me, I've I've been a bit all over the place lately. Uh, yeah, um, it seems like uh, seems like that's the case. But uh, wanted to bring this back here, and not for nothing, but. Uh, uh, sorry no, no, of course, of course, you, uh... Ah, uh, yes. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, where are my manners? Uh, he kind of rings a bell. Ding, ding. Yes, sir. One of the men walks in. He looks like the same exact dude. Is it uh, the same you... exact dude? <laughs> Roll perception check. Oh, my God. 16. No, different. What? Yeah. They have the same haircut, but his nose is a bit bigger. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, can you uh, fetch these men? Oh, I don't know. Just writes down a number, crumples it in a piece of paper, and throws it at him. Just bring that. Holds it up. Yes, sir. Kind of nods and walks away. <sighs> What's your impression of the beasts on the throne? As one looks at Wolfgang and does a little nod, like, "Oh, now you want me to talk?" Oh, but yeah, hey, I did my part of the deal. You can talk now. I'm good. I've got my own opinions. I'd say I think they're messing with forces beyond their comprehension at the moment. Do go on. Hmm. I'm going to insight him real quick to see why he wants to know. Go ahead. Ten. Ooh. He seems like he's nursing a hangover and you can't quite get a good read on him. He's just kind of staring at you. Well, I've just, I've got my theories. No, like, I'd... Given what we saw up there. This force that took my boy. Were you the one that put it down? Yes. Uh, me and my compatriots here. And uh, if I might speak, I, as a father myself, I cannot even fathom what you are going through right now. And I am so sorry. Did it fucking suffer? I'd say it did. His head exploded like a fucking grape. After he oh, shot him, and shot him, and hit him, and shot him so hard he hit a goddamn wall. He lets out a small smile. Good. We did your boy justice. Uh, he was turning a hundred soon. Old enough to be a true man. What race is Mr. Crowley? <laughs> oh, he's an elf. Ah, yeah, he's, uh, he's a full-blooded elf. One of the one of the few that you've met now. Explains why they uh, uh, gather so much, so much wealth. Freaking elves. <laughs> it's not in It's not in character, by the way. I was about to say. No, no, no. It wasn't in character at all. Freaking elves. Yeah, he sits at his desk and. 
pull, uh, pulls out like a couple of glasses. Any of you? Kind of like gestures around the room. Yeah, sure. I hold up the hand without the ring. Tink, yep. tink, tink. He set. He sets down three glasses. Anyone else? I'm good. No trouble. Thank you, sir. Sorry, what was that, uh, Wolfgang? Uh, if it's no trouble, I wouldn't mind. Pulls out a fourth glass and then brings out a bit of a decanter with some brown liquid in it. Starts pouring it. It glows amber in the light as it pours into the glass. He picks up two of the glasses and kind of nudges to you guys. Go ahead. Points at the ones on the table. Alrighty. You can grab it. I grab mine. He shoots one straight down. <laughs> sets it down and just begins sipping the second one. <sighs> Start licking the whiskey. <laughs> it's actually brandy. It has a subtle sweetness to it, but something that you've never quite tasted before. That's good. Mm. Mm. What is this? Mm. It's brandy from my own line. Yes. Ah. It is very yummy. You take a sip. It's quite good. I'm a whiskey man myself, but uh, I could get used to this. Mm. Mm. Trust me when I say this, Mr. Crowley. I am looking into the forces at work that uh, took your boy from you, and I will not rest until they have been brought to task. I appreciate it. Uh, perhaps someday the powers that be will grant me the power to do as such as well. Are you, you a religious man? Hardly. He says, looking over at you. You seem familiar for some reason. Do I know you? I mean, aside from seeing you this morning. Well, my family was well known around here quite a while ago. My name is Wolfgang Connolly. Ah, the Connollys. Used to live a few houses down from here, as I recall. Kept yourselves a bunch, didn't really go to the gatherings that we like to throw around here, though your family seem to be more stoic. Kind of says that with a bit of snideness to him, almost. Sorry, sorry, his memories, uh, they were always quite friendly with the crown. Says as he takes a sip. Till, what generation are you? Who is your father? Uh, my father was Rowan Connolly. Ah, uh, yes. He and his brother were the ones that left, as I recall. Yes. Well, I never grew up in the city. Hmm. Yeah, that was a bit of a commotion after you left. Ah, <sighs> well. So many happy returns. He holds out his glass toward you. I hold on my glass to his sort of poker facing. He clinks with you and just kind of takes a sip. Oh. I could use people like you. Strong. Not afraid to get their hands dirty. Hmm. But we can talk about that later. For now, how about a... Uh, ah, yes! I'm throwing a, a bit of a soiree tonight if you are... Uh, you are more than welcome to come. There'll be food, beverage, uh, plenty of company. Ooh, what time? And what's the dress code? Uh, just after dark and whatever you're wearing now should suffice. You're still wearing your very nice clothes that was set aside for you for your audience with the king. And that should do just fine, frankly. Okay, then. Ooh. All right. Let's I'm sure there will be... Many who are interested in your stories and your company. Oh. Many mm -hmm. have been the talk of the town lately. Uh, why? <laughs> well, <laughs> you defended the realms that the throne could not. Yet another transgression against its people. Huh. Fairness. Yes. They sit there, never aging. 
always looking down on us. Tell me something. Not that I'm, you know, advocating for any sort of harsh action, but... Do you think that they would willingly step down should the people decide that they want to govern themselves? Do you think they would? Hmm. Uh, uh, at this point, we know they're... We, we pretty much know they're dragons, right? Yes. Well, prideful beings as they are, I would vote ag I would bet against it, but anything's possible, really. Yes, I suppose it is. If beasts like them can exist, then I suppose anything can happen. I would say it all depends on if the dragons see the people of the kingdom as their horde or not. <laughs> what do you know of dragons, boy? You seem oh. to speak as if you've had first-hand experience. Nay, only what I've read in books. But I've read quite a many books. Quite a many books, indeed. Tell you what, if you ever have any interest, uh, some of my great-grandfather's library is just gathering dust. It's downstairs. If you ever have need, feel free to browse them as you wish. You have my thanks, Lord Crowley. Please, call me Xander. Lord, is so intimidating. My lord, the great king, bringer of fire, etc., etc. Uh, the attendant walks back in carrying a sack seemingly stuffed with coin. Just kind of sets it down. Uh, there, there you are. That is the number specified. And he just kind of sets it on the table. Yes, thank you. Um, you may leave. Uh, for the safe return of my family's blade he kind of like gestures towards whichever one of you wants to grab it asmo already there <laughs> <laughs> takes it it's heavy heavier than the bag the queen gave you uh, how, how, uh, uh, quick question what, what's in the bag uh what did i write down uh, uh 900 sir 900 oh. coin Ooh. Uh, i should probably share shouldn't i it's your prerogative Either way, you are most welcome back here this evening after dusk. Please. What do you I, think, boys? If you'll excuse me, I uh, have a bit more grieving to do as he pours himself another glass. Very well. Uh, we uh, maybe see you tonight. Pleasant ventures. Absolutely. Shoots one back and starts sipping from the other one. 900 gold. All right, so uh, pretty much... Uh, as we walk out, Asma just got a big bag of gold in both arms. Okay. Okay. Are we all, are we all leaving then? Are we all good to leave? Yeah. Yeah, the, the attendant will usher you out of the house. All right, so... Okay. All righty, we should discuss this gold now. I really like all of it. Um... <laughs> well... Uh, the queen handed me a sack. Uh, the king handed Denier a sack. And you were handed a sack by Mr. Crowley. Well, that is true. I think Ooh. we should uh, keep our hands on our own sacks. Very well. I could agree to that. But tell you what. Never what? mind. Not okay. Never mind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I gotta add nine. I gotta do some. I gotta do some math here. Let me pull up my calculator. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, the uh, the money from the ceremony was never returned to you, but you were each given five hundred gold from the queen. Just so we're clear on that one. Ah. Yeah, all three of us got five hundred. And then uh, Osmo got nine hundred from Mister Crowley. Mm -hmm. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! He's never had this amount of money in his life. He really has not. He like, you, you can't exactly Scrooge McDuck your way into it, but man, could you smooth, I, like? You could probably... cons I'm considering having a bath with it. Get a, a, get a kiddie pool. Get a yeah, you, you know what? You, get, you could have. You could probably have a foot bath with the amount you have. He's, 
Uh, so it's just walking, bouncing with this giant bag of gold. <laughs> big, oh old, big old burlap sack with a dollar sign printed on it. I am so <laughs> glad. I, I am so glad I started that little highway job. I knew it would lead to money indirectly, and eventually I got to it, but now I'm just falling into it. <laughs> oh, ding, 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 ding. Just making a bunch of noise. Ugh. Uh, you're a happy hmm. boy as uh, the midday sun is starting to hit above you. You have, you can do anything you want with the day, really. I got everything I ever wanted my entire life, so what do you guys want to do? I still need to pick up some gems and some scrolls and some paper, plus whatever Wolfgang needs to do. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll head over to Tim Reese for that. Yeah, Talos and Tim Reese, you make your way back down there, and ha oh boy, the meat house. Oh, the air is thick with a... Thick. Wispy smoke and the smell of slow cooked meat. Is the best really to trying start? to get us to go back there, huh? I, I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm telling I'm you. Just right now, te- I'm just giving you I, atmosphere. As someone who's been to Dallas, Texas, I know Nick has made Meat House just every Dallas barbecue in exist. Every Texas barbecue place combined into one entity. Along with some churrascaria and a few other inspirations, yeah. So while we're walking, as, or Denier is going to look over towards Asmo. I've got a question for you that I've been curious about since before we left Amberglade. Oh, really? What's that? You can unhinge your jaws. And exactly what's the biggest thing that you've ever swallowed? (laughs) Okay. Trying to think of an appropriate answer to that question. Remember, this pig is the largest thing till now, so it would be smaller than that small pig. No, last night the pig was the biggest thing ever. That was so good. I've never split my head. Never, I don't hinge my jaw for everything. I wait for this special, special meat. Uh, I'm trying to just mouth his watering, remembering the pig. Yeah, while living in the wild, you might have done so for like a couple of rabbits or something that you didn't have time to cook, so you didn't want to have to savor it, so you just shove it down there. But, um, but no, I... You don't always want to unhinge your jaw. You save it for the right moment. Or the right person. Or the right pig. You know, that would be a hell of a threat for one of the smaller races, like a goblin or a, a gnome or a halfling. Hey, uh, don't, don't, don't get me started. That's a last, that's like the, that's like if I'm out of food, I'm willing. Well, I mean, it, as, as a threat, I don't actually expect you to do it, but it'd be a hell of a threat. Uh, when you're hungry enough, you're willing to eat anything. Fair enough. I think I met a lizard folk a while back. Actually ate a goblin hole. What? Yeah, crazy. Was it, was it like, was like the goblin asleep and they slowly slide up? Oh no, he was fighting it. No, he was fighting it. It was, it was nuts. Did he knock all the weapons out of his body? Because if you do that, he could just like cut his way out. Gotta be careful when you do that. I think the, the, the goblin was a little uh, in shock, really. Kind of. Jeez. And I don't know. This is all secondhand. This is a story. Uh, I met the guy, though, and uh, he seems the type to do it. Yeah, well, like you, actually. Oh, really? What was his name? Can't remember. Little do you know, you got the goblin sitting there. This is my fetish! Was his name Vor? No. <laughs> Vor the Serpinator. <laughs> Eatinator, eatinating the peasants. Are we? Are we? Are we there yet? <laughs> yes, you've made it. You've made it to the front <laughs> of Talos and Timrys. Okay. Okay. <laughs> As you enter, uh, old Talos is still just sitting there behind the desk. Hello and welcome back to Talos and... T- hey! <laughs> ah, twice in two days. Hello there, boys. Howdy. Hey! Hey, Tim! 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 Fucking what? <laughs> the boys are back. Good for them. Ah, he seems a little busy and a little ornery today. So, what brings you back to my shop? Well, 
We're in the market for some uh, spell casting components, and I'm in the market for some uh, for some uh, tools, probably. Well, I suppose I can help with the former. If uh, Tim would like to help with the latter, you just hear a bunch of clanging downstairs. <laughs> Piece of shit! <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, frustrated at the moment, I believe. Yeah, tinkering can do that. I've heard Jamat swear, swear his head off more than a couple of times when he was <laughs> making my peace. Ah, the old boy's brother. <laughs> he was a card. So what uh, what components and such might you be looking for, boys? Well, uh, first thing for the components, I require a diamond that is uh, a fair size. Uh, okay. Worth at least 50 gold. Um, That's one, specific. Yeah. it's It's got to be just the right kind, you know? Uh, this, the spell is really, really finicky with this kind of thing. Um, oh, they often are. I understand. Let's see. Um, he starts making down like a bit of a list as you're listing things off. Uh, one pearl. Pearl? Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be about this big. He holds up, uh, holds up his bird fingers uh, pretty much uh, about a hundred gold, hundred gold pieces worth of a pearl mm, yes quite rare up here indeed uh, identification can be tricky but it is very useful in the field um, I was also hoping to browse through your spell scrolls if you have any as well as uh, if you have any uh, ink and paper specifically designed for the practice of arcane uh, writings and etchings and the like. Hmm. Well, I can definitely offer you some of those. Let me go check for you. Wonderful. He gets Thank up. You. Ah, ah. If you want to browse yourself some scrolls while I go about finding these particular materials, uh, there's a basket over there. There's a variety inside. He starts making his way to the back as he gives himself like a couple of old man stretches. All right, let's go. Uh, for the scrolls, do you have any specific rulings uh, for them, or are they just, you know, random scrolls? You know, I have been meaning to bring somebody in to organize this stuff, but it's never really been my style. My grandson used to join us here, but he's off venturing now and <laughs> cut off the old block he is. Absolutely goes wonderful. Off. Yeah, he goes off and starts uh, pawing through materials, looking at various gemstones. No. No. I mean, I might sell this for a 50. No, though. Not not good for that spell. So, yeah, what, uh, what, like, are you looking for scroll, like, what type of scrolls are you looking for in particular? Um, most of them are, like, first level spells, uh, like, say, for example, the two that I know that I'm definitely looking for is Catapult and Healing Elixir. Healing Elixir is from, uh, Unearthed Arcana. Um, Catapult seems pretty interesting. Uh, Alarm would be phenomenal. Um. All right, let me give you a quick roll to see what we got. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll say that, uh, unfortunately, uh, Healing Elixir is not there, although you do find a couple scrolls of Healing Word, mm -hmm. and uh, you can find the Alarm Spell. Okay. Those are the ones that you find when you're just kind of going through these scrolls as he makes his way back. All right. Also, I'm going to roll to see if he has that pearl. Wow. Yeah. Lucky, a fresh shipment just came in today for him. Kind of sets down a pearl, sets down your diamond. And you said you wanted scrolls and ink. Well, kind of lifts up a slab of parchment that looks like it can be weaved into a book. And a quill and some ink. That should suffice for you. Let's see. If memory serves right, it's 50 gold per level. So, un so that is a first level. So I'll need at least fifty gold for that. Um, do you 
does he have unseen servant scorching ray or um shatter nat one no he does not okay <laughs> fair enough then i will buy um with the gem and the pearl that's going to be 150 at least correct and the materials i'll say i'll buy 200 gold worth of uh paper and ink and the like jesus you're grabbing fucking reams yeah so that's 400 total Let's see. 50, uh, are you are you taking the three scrolls i mentioned the alarm and the two healing words how much would the the scrolls cost me each let me see here uh, i believe alarm is a first level spell correct yes mm -hmm. so that'd be 50 typically okay uh healing word is that first or second uh healing word is first yeah so that's an additional hundred if you want both of those so you're looking at probably he's gonna ask for about 450 gold total for this transaction i'll do it yeah all right so that is alarm two healing words mm -hmm. the components for identify and chromatic orb and Correct. the the 200 golds worth of uh, spell scribing. Yep. You got plenty of materials for you. Perfect. You know, if you're interested in magic, my uh, wife, well, wife, runs the school in town. I confess I did give some thought to the school if you know, being in the capital is a more permanent thing rather than us just heading back to Amberglade. Well, it's open for you if you decide to look for it. And uh, Wolfgang, you said you were looking for equipment of sorts? Yeah, uh, I wanted to talk to uh, Timri about about something specific. Yeah, if you're not too shy about him, you can just go ahead and like try to go down this hatch. Yeah, I think he'll let me down there. Don't don't worry. <laughs> Give him my regards. Oh oh, uh, take this to him. He hasn't eaten yet. He kind of hands you a uh, looks like a sandwich wrapped in parchment. <laughs> yeah, will do. As you creak open the door, it's it's a little heavy. Like there's definitely a mechanism that's supposed to do it, but uh, you you manage to do it. It's not something you'd have to roll for, but you definitely got to use your legs. You're just like, Ugh, son of a. You start to descend the steps. Yeah, piece of crap! Ting, ting, ting! You hear in the back as you make your way through this tinkerer's dream and normal person's nightmare of just hanging cogs and bits and bobs and bends. Sounds like you're having trouble, Timry. Yeah, you see him as he's smacking at the metal shell of what looks to be like a like almost a humanoid body just like ah hunk of junk doesn't seem to want to wake up but yeah I'll figure that shit out whatever oh. what you making there oh. i've been dabbling as of late well he kind of takes off his glove and shows you the hand that he tinkered for himself and as you know i uh dabble a bit so i thought to myself you know what timry you're a little old to be having children now, but what if you, well, created one? And I thought to myself, eh, if anybody's going to do it, it would be an Atson. I just don't know how to get it to start working on its own. Wait, you're you're, like you're, you're making a a metal man? Is that well, hold on, it? take take a look. He's he throws like a switch on the wall and it starts to move. The head blows up. Son of a bitch! Close, turns off the light again. What's going on down there? Are you okay? Or good. Hey, yes, we keep counting my money. Uh huh. There's a a, 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 a certain uh, something is missing, and I am unsure what. I will find out what that is, though. Hmm. Maybe something anyway. uh, arcane variety, soul crystal, maybe. I'll send a I'll send a letter to Jamat and see what he thinks about this. Ah, uh, I will suppose I would appreciate the bastard's take on it. Well, 
Sorry, Just... what? Sorry, I been up all night doing this. Uh, what, 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 what can I help you with? You can see he's got like bags under his eyes. Stomach starts to grumble a bit. Ah, uh, shut well, up, you! First of all, eat something, and I, I hand him the sandwich. <laughs> Talos. Oh. I a, 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 a look of subtle displeasure crosses his face as he bites in. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> Just keeps eating. I was hoping to get your opinion on something. Uh, what would that be, my boy? And I pull out an empty shell casing. Mm. And I sort of like roll it around in my hand. Just like, I've been trying to uh, see if I can get a bit more utility out of my out of my firearm here. Uh, I load in the bullets by hand and I can mix and match however I like. I was uh, trying to see if there was some way to maybe like enchant these little lead these little lead rounds I got here. Uh, or maybe make them with some different material. I was wondering if you had any input on that. He looks at the bullets and uh the way your gun specifically works is it doesn't actually ignite gunpowder. There's literally a crystal at the end of the uh, hammer that basically causes an explosion to go off within the gun that fires it out the barrel. So as he ah. looks at the, as he looks at the bullet, he's, hmm. well, I suppose if you had a deft enough skill with your hands, you could craft one of these at about just about anything. It'll take some time though. You've been making these yourself. Yeah, uh, I, I pull out some silver ones as well. He uh, goes over to his desk and hands you a file. You got burrs on the ends of it. It's going to ruin your trajectory. He starts to kind of like file it down with his, uh, basically his like metallic hand. <laughs> there you go. See, nice and smooth. Now you got a nice smooth ride out the barrel. Oh, interesting. Could I buy a file off of you then? Oh, take it. He kind of he he just like motions with the one that he's handing to you. I I take it and I smile. Yeah, you now yes. have a yeah you have a steel file. Something you and your brother have in common. You're both too kind to me. <laughs> well, your family's done us a mess of good. I do mean it. I was sad when you guys left, but. My life is here. Well, from stories my father told, uh, we had our reasons. Mm. So you did. Heard there was quite a bit of fallout when you left. Yeah, I've been uh, sort of dealing with the ramifications of that ever since I stopped by the capital. People giving me looks and stuff. Mm. Not many remember your family, although the older races do. Yeah, specifically the crown itself and uh, one Mr. Crowley. Hmm. Careful around that man. Gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, I met him earlier today. We were returning his son's sword. Uh, didn't seem like the most stable individual. We're going to go to his uh, little soiree he's planning tonight just to keep an eye on him, really. At least that's <laughs> why I'm there. Well, he does throw a hell of a party, I will say that. You ever been to one? <laughs> he kind of looks at you. A few, every now and again. <laughs> well, hmm. Something else. Ah... Uh... I've been thinking. I've been thinking over some plans in my head. Uh, watching Jamat work on my gun, it's uh, put a few thoughts in my brain, and uh, I was wondering if uh, you had any sort of different tinkerers kits, maybe that I could, you know, work on some ideas of mine. <laughs> well, your lot never did have much of a skill for tinkering, but who am I to judge? Let me see what I got lying around here. This I'm afraid I will have to charge you for, though. We are running a business. Well, fortunately for you, I've got the money now. <laughs> kind of smirks as he goes looking around. Now, that old contraption that 
Jamat made for you has given me some ideas, but it'll take me some time to fool around with some designs. Uh, ta -ta -ta, this piece here. Of course, you have the file. Uh, where's that? He starts, like, digging around in just a pile of junk. <laughs> he comes back with a small box. It's a little cumbersome to carry around with you all. <laughs> Admit. It's just full of various little, uh, like, screwdrivers and wrenches and nuts and bolts. Just any little thing that you might need to tinker with. Uh, some brushes and files. Or you don't need the file. You already have the file. But there are a couple of smaller files that help to shave off various pieces of things that you might need to get into. I could probably part with these things for... Oh, God, how much will it take to replace those? 150 gold. 150. That's hmm. just replacement cost, my boy. Well... It's not quite. It's a little, infl a little inflation. A boy's gotta get something to drink. No, that's fair. Um, well, it'll be a little cumbersome to lug around with me, but I'll tell you what. Uh, keep it on hand, and if I get a more permanent residence in town, maybe uh, I will see about having it transferred to a residence, maybe. <laughs> if you move back here, you bring that brother of mine with you. I got questions for him as well. Plus, it's been... God, what? 30 years? <laughs> How old are you now? Uh, around 30, yeah. Yeah, 30 years. <laughs> Damn. Huh. Anything else I can do you for? Mr. Connolly. Hmm. Uh... You got any uh, experimental gadgets you're working on besides the big metal man? <laughs> Nothing that I'd safely sell you. Ah, fair enough. Well, I think that's it for down here at least. Um, but I will likely be back. I'm going to go take a look upstairs, see if I can't get myself some uh, scrolls or something. Uh, tell Talos thanks for the sandwich, but it tastes like shite. You can leave that part out if you want, but I'll tell him later. Ah. Uh, all right. Well, good luck. Uh, try not to explode. I'll do my best. He flips the switch again. The arm pops off. <laughs> Mother! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I, I head upstairs and leave him to it. Sounds like he's killing a man slowly and getting hurt uh, in the process. It's sort of the opposite, but you know what? Let's not get into it. Uh, Talos. Yes? It says, thanks for the sandwich, but it tastes like shit. <laughs> ah, good. It worked. Just kind of smiles to himself. Wait, what was, did... there actual sh was there actual shit in the sandwich? What did you <laughs> no. Do? What did you do to my my step-uncle? Uh, wh whatever relation he is to me. <laughs> uh, it's just a joke. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just He's not eating actual excrement, I think. Just a prank, bro. <laughs> well, fair enough. Uh, hold on, hold on. Did he eat the whole thing? I think so. <laughs> Got okay. an insight on this guy. Go for it. He wiped the sandwich in his ass. 18. You can, like, he, he's telling the truth when he said it's not full of actual poop, but... He definitely did something to it. Well, I suppose if it's harmless. Oh, uh, trust me, trust me. It is it is the opposite of harmful for him. Boy needs his vitamins, and I need a laugh every now and again. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, uh, going to take a look at some of your scrolls you got lying around. Right ahead. Right over there in that bucket, basket, <laughs> I don't know. The bucket of scrolls. I look in the bucket basket. Sure. You looking for anything in particular, or just want me to roll for what you find? Uh, roll for it. All right. I'm imagining it's like those things at, like, HMV, where you have the posters and you just side to side. All right. That means I'm going to choose from this random school. Of, just a bunch of Deadpool. That'd be First. convenient, actually. 
first level, and I will pull three of these. One, two, three. Good old spell cards. That's cool. Ooh. That's that's a fun way of playing this. I need to get me some of those. Yeah. From this, you find a scroll of Comprehend Languages, a scroll for Identify, ironically. No. And a scroll for Speak with Animals. I'll take the Comprehend Languages and Identify scrolls. Nah, if you're looking for those, eh, 100 gold total. Yeah, sure, that sounds fair. Gladly takes your money. Pleasure doing business with you. Mm. All right, everyone, if everyone's looking at these scrolls, I gotta look at these scrolls, too. As one goes up to look at the scrolls, what do you got for me? All Come right, on, Nick. roll. Come on, Nick. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's see. Yay. Let me grab from this pile here. Come on, levels. There we go. I'll mix in a couple of these second level ones because that's a particularly high roll. Yay. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. I'm calling now he's going to get something One, amazing that I'm going to want. Two. <laughs> and three. All right. From your pile, you found a scroll for fairy fire. Uh -huh. A scroll for Firebolt. <laughs> and a scroll of darkness. Ooh. Ooh. What does darkness do? Darkness. Uh, magical darkness spreads from the point you choose within a range of a 15-foot radius sphere for the duration of the spell. The darkness spreads around corners. A creature within... Uh, a creature with dark vision can't see through this darkness. And non-magical light... It... Uh, and non-magical light can't illuminate it. Uh, if the point you choose is an object you are holding or one that isn't being worn or carried, the darkness emanates from the object and moves with it. Completely covering the source of the darkness with an opaque object, such as a bowl or a helm, blocks the darkness. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's like reverse light. Pretty yes, much. It's literally reverse light. Ooh, that darkness spell sounds handy. Ooh, I slam that down. I slam all three down. Ring me up. That'll be 200 gold. That's, that's, I'll take it. All right, so let me add these scrolls to my inventory. There All right, you have Fairy Fire, Darkness, and Firebolt. Okay, Fairy Fire. I'm going to just write this down. Uh, fairy Fire. Firebolt? Firebolt, yes. That's the spell that Garak has continuously tried to use on you. Or has continuously oh, I know. used. Oh, that, that, that's why I got it. Uh, and uh, Darkness. Darkness. I cast dark. This is one, these are one-time uses, right? Yes, that's what scrolls typically are. Thank you very much. Oh, cool. Any other knickknacks or weird things you got here? I'm, I'm rolling more money than I know what to do to, do with, and I, I want to spend it. What well, you you're more than welcome to spend it here, my friend. Just what do you got? What do you got? Well, I've got this. He holds up a healing potion. Ooh, I got a bunch of those, but uh, what's special about this one? It's, it's it gives you vitality. God damn it! Did you go to that apothecary? Yes, I did. Yes, that I son did. of a bitch! I thought he died. No, he looks like he's always going to die, though. Doesn't he, though? Yeah, he's he looked tried like to... that since he was twenty. Oh my god, what happened to him? I don't know. <laughs> well, how much are you charging for your healing potions? You know, the normal rate. Five gold. 20, 20. What? Yeah, he's charging five gold a pop, so... That son of a bitch. Yeah, so I'd like to buy this at the same price the other one costs. I think that's only fair. You have a price match option here. Guys. You have a price match option. I'm doing that right now. We do not offer our competition's coupons. Ah, well, that is such a shame, and I wish you the best of luck, Brockbuster. Anyways... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm joking. Uh, I should be good with these anyways. Thank you so much, sir. And pleasure doing business with you. Pleasure to you as well. Just I'm so good. You know, Taka, as soon as you cast uh, Darkness, I'm immediately casting Magic Missile into it. Okay, good. You gotta, do, you gotta you shoot Magic Missile at the Darkness. Yes. It's, only, it's always necessary. As is tradition. All right, so you leave Talos and Timrys with your 
pockets full of scrolls and a little lighter on gold. Oof. Oof. I'm still, I spent everything I wanted. And I'm still rolling in cash. I'm loving it. I'm loving this. God. The one to the big wigs back when I was a kid acted like hot shit. I feel like hot shit right now. Uh-uh. So, now we said we were kind of interested, but do we actually want to go to that party tonight? Because that sounds, uh, fun. Before we head out tomorrow. Yeah, I sort of wanted to keep an eye on Mr. Crowley. I mean, it's going to be hard when we, you know, leave. Is there anything you wanted to do in the evening before uh, heading to his party? Meet house. Meet house. Meet house. <laughs> Y'all stop by for lunch at the meat house. Yeah! And while we're waiting for our food, I will uh, write up a letter to Jamat, just telling him that we're doing well, that we got paid, we got an audience with the, with the royals, and uh, just basically telling him the Timri's problem with his metal man. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, you write that up and you... Also ask how Elliot's doing. Yeah, you write that up and you're able to put that... uh, Like, pretty much get that to a courier on your way to the meat house, which is just down the road, but... You give it to the post and pay your postage, about five silver, and they... Okay. Sort it out and get it on its way. As you arrive at the meat house, it's, uh, it's very, very crowded today. Seems that smell has been drawing in a whole bunch of people, uh, including a familiar bronze man oh. who seems to be sitting at the table you were sitting at yesterday, kind of surrounded by beautiful women of various races. <laughs> oh. oh no, it's, 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 it's fresh. It's fresh. Shadzilla. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Barazilla. Is he just surrounded with many women? Yes, surrounded by many women. Many beautiful women. I mean, like, are they beautiful in, in personality or in looks? At the very least, looks, you haven't talked to any of them yet. Okay, that's fair. That's a safe answer. Yeah. I, I um, Asmo stops and goes, puts his hand on both the guys' chests. Oh, oh. Look who that is. I see it. Oh. And I want to go the opposite direction. Oh, oh. They're there. Come on. Meat house. I want to go to meat. Ah. If you can find a table on the exact opposite side of that guy, I will come with you to meat house. Okay, but let's go ask. Let's go ask what they have available. Maybe they got something at the bar. Would that be fine? Would you be okay to eat at the bar? That's fine. Okay, let's go ask. Okay, well, Asmo goes up to the... Is it, is it seat yourself or wait to be seated? Kind it's, of it's seat yourself, and uh, let me roll real quick. Oh, boy. Yeah, there, there is a table specifically for four just right in the, like, in the establishment itself, not even on the outside. All righty, then we go sit there. Yeah, as you walk past the... Uh, the bronze man is kind of chortling and speaking of tales from his past. So I flew above him and I was lit the lot on fire. <laughs> the women giggle and the men ah, kind of laugh too. Ah, yeah. Ah, you're <laughs> uh, so funny. As, pi- as Pig sort of walks past you carrying a large platter that looks like it's a whole haunch. The is whole haunch? Your... It's like this whole, it looks like a quarter of a beast. Like it's huge. He steps out there. Is your ox master, Eresh? F- thank you for gracing us with your presence. Yeah, th- thank, thank you, pig. <laughs> thank you, you're welcome. Oh no. And uh, Horace starts eating the ox. Um, guys, you don't think that that's our ox, do you? The one that Garrick brought in. Why would oh, it be no. our ox? I don't know. I think they would have oxes specifically for Eden if they were on demand by uh, by the bronze boy over there. Fair enough. Passing thought, really. Maybe he Pig killed lot. our maybe he okay. killed our ox and dragged it in here and said, "Cook it up." Seems like the kind uh, of guy would do that. That would be very rude. Yeah, I would pig have walks some up to your table. Him. Oh, hey, see you lot again. Welcome back. Glad I made a good impression. Oh yes, you did, sir. The pig was. Amazing to take in, and 
difficult to take out, but nonetheless. Could I get three quails this time and the biggest pitcher of ale you have? I can make that work, Smithink. If we ain't got no fa- if we ain't got no quails, you okay with other fowl? Uh, just tiny chickens. Uh, just chickens who never could qu- were never quite big enough. I gotta be uh delicate on my stomach today. So just chickens three. I can do. Anything well for the rest of the lot of yous. We still got three quarters of an ox. Just picked it up this morning. Uh. Ever- I'll, I'll, I'll have a chicken as myself. Old oh, chicken for you. Hey, for you, you ordered a uh, half chicken last time. Is there uh, more that you like? I've heard really good things about your salad. I actually want to try your salad today. He kind of looks at you a little confused. Hey, ain't you got them sharp teeth? Don't you like the meat? I do. But I figured you put meat in your salad. Oh, no. All right, one salad. He goes back and starts prepping your food. A server comes out and presents you your uh, stein of ale, Asmo. Lem, 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 lem. <laughs> Start some lemming that. Yeah, eventually the crowd starts to disperse as uh, Horatio leaves. Hmm. Most interesting. Yeah, there's just uh, bones sitting at that table where he was. That guy eats his meat, that he does. Speaking of meat, Pig comes back out with your full assortment, Osmo. He, he managed to find two quail, but uh, had to replace the last one with a duck. Okay, that works. And everybody else gets... Uh, uh, Wolfgang, you get your chicken. It's cooked exquisitely. The skin is deliciously crisp, and it's golden, and... Uh, as for you, Denier, he presents a salad. It looks quite simple, but there's a odor to it that's mesmerizing. It must be coming from the dressing. Ooh. As each of you, yeah, as each of you bite in, it's ah, it's like heaven. It's like this most tender, delicious meat that's smoky and flavorful, and the salad tastes like a salad, but the dressing is. It's indescribable. Mm-hmm. It's like this sweet, salty, spicy, umami, delicious nectar of the gods. You can't... Uh, where did it come from? Who made this? It's a good meal. You enjoy yourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm. As you prepare for the party after the break. All right. You begin to make your way back up to the noble quarters as the evening falls. And as you do, you start to run across the foot traffic of several people, and that dark Victorian mansion that you saw during the day is now all lit up. There seems to be candles floating in the courtyard, the door is wide open, and there are many people here just dressed impeccably. This is a very nice event. There are men walking around carrying trays of delicious-looking food, Some of it smell very familiar to lunch. You got quail's eggs. You have lots of people walking around with very nice jewelry on for the women and some men. And very lavish looking robes often made of very fine materials, silks and the such. You're greeted by an attendant. Uh, hello? Oh, uh, you guess, yeah. uh, I suppose the master invited you. You suppose correct. correct. Uh, please point me to the open bar. That would be most preferable. Uh, yes. Uh, feel free. Make yourselves at home. That's weird. I don't have a home. As I walks past him on the shoulder, I walks past him. All right. As you walk past, you uh, begin to, you know, get, get glances from the other members in this party who uh, some recognize you, some just kind of don't comprehend exactly what you're doing here, but uh, they, they don't seem to make any mention of it if they show any distaste. Ba, 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 ba. Ta, 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 ta. And as you're walking around, you notice... Uh, go ahead and give me perception checks. Oh, boy. Here we go. That's a 10. That's a 10. 17. 
That's a 10. 10, 17, 10. You all notice the fact that uh, the silver lady is here. Tia is here. But, uh, Denier, you notice something, someone else. There is a uh, man standing in the corner of the room just chatting up a bunch of people. They seem to be enthralled in this tale that he's telling, and they're laughing. Uh, he's got suave, slicked back black hair. He's quite handsome. And he is also the man who took your platinum. Like, there's no mistaking it. That is that man's face. He might have been disguised, but you see him. Like, that's him. Nudge, uh, Denier will nudge Wolfgang in, in the side and motion and uh, motion with his head over towards the guy. Hey, look who it is. Oh, flatter out bastard. Now, to the rest of you, he'd like, you're, you're not really picking up on this, but he, he looks like any normal guy, but as Denier explains it, you start to see the similarities from the man whose uh, putty nose was falling off his face. So, what do you think? Well, if I had to hazard a guess, some sort of bodyguard for the silver lady. He's just off talking in the corner and flirting with a few of the Ladies in the, uh, in attendance. Although he does seem to be, uh, rather separated from where the Silver Lady and Ven are standing. Hey, silly question, Nick. You had the music on for a second there, and then it was turned off. Yeah, it was a much shorter loop than I anticipated. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, are you at the bar? Yeah, that's where you want to go. You can find people carrying around drinks. They will hand them to you as you wish. Thank you very much. Uh, Asmo's going to wander over to Ven. She's dressed very. She's dressed very nicely today, um, in a silver silken dress with some nice little fiery embroideries on it. And the queen is dressed, or the uh, silver lady. I'm sorry, is dressed in a navy blue looking silver dress as well. Kind of almost. I'd, I'd say rather like a Chinese dress, you know, those yeah. armless, form-fit types. Mm -hmm. uh, Asmo snakes over to her and slides up behind beside her. Oh, good. <laughs> Somebody to talk to. Uh, we got to start meeting like this. How's it going, Vin? Oh, you know, just here. Rolls her eyes. Uh, the uh, Tia kind of nudges her. I know. I'm sorry. So we're going on the mission. To, so we're going on the mission tomorrow. She kind of steps on your foot and just glares at you. Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. I know what to talk about that. Oh, right. terribly sorry. She says, looking you in the eye. Uh, I I simply must watch my step. No, it's okay. Why don't you? Uh, is there people dancing? Oh yeah, there's a small band in uh, in the grand foyer of the mansion where a few people seem to be. Uh, taking up the offer and dancing with each other. Might I bother you for a dance and so you can uh, show me how to place your feet properly? Roll persuasion. <laughs> 14. She kind of looks around. <sighs> Why not? She offers her hand. Uh, what every guy wants to hear. <laughs> I grab her by the hand. And I uh, take her out to the dance floor. You guys can, you can cut back to me when you want. Yeah, sure. No problem. What are the rest of you doing with this party? Socializing with the nobles. Uh, right. Denier's heading towards the library. All right. Um, Nerd! Who wants to read books during a party? Yeah, Wolfgang, you... Walk up to a group of men who are smoking from pipes, some of them smoking cigars, and they're just giving that, like, they're, they're basically Monopoly men. <laughs> kind of guys. <laughs> oh, I do say hello there. Hello there. Oh, you're one of those heroes from the north, right? Oh. Yes, a fine evening to you, good sirs. Uh, my name is Wolfgang Connolly. Oh, very nice to meet you. Connolly! 
Well, that name does ring a bell or two. Yes, yes, yes. You, you had a, a legacy here, I do believe. Yes, yes. Your family left quite a while ago. Quite. Yes, indeed they did, but we're starting to make a comeback now. Or, well, at least I am. <laughs> well, well, good luck getting back to your old place. <laughs> There's a bit of a hoff from the uh, crowd. Oh, really? And, and uh, what would that be? Is there something going on in the Connolly household? Well, surely you must have passed it, unless you don't remember your own home. Well, I, you'll have to forgive me, good sirs. I was very little when I left the city. Well, it's that uh, gold monstrosity just a few ways down there. <laughs> I will say, if you do manage to get it back, uh, do, do try to return it to its uh, former looks. I'll say the gold is a bit gaudy. <laughs> hmm, indeed. Uh, who, uh, who seems to be occupying the house nowadays? Well, that would be Master Loxley, of course. He, uh came in, and he was the highest bidder that could afford the place, of course. The other two, well, severely overestimated their funds. He points over, and it's that same black-haired man that, uh, oh, didn't you oh. pointed out earlier. Uh, is that Loxley? Yeah, Mas yeah, his last name is Loxley. Oh my god. That is... Really? <laughs> and what's, he's, what's he in the business of? Well, he's, uh, as far as he says, he's an adventurer of sorts, a treasure hunter and nobleman who likes to travel the world and find various artifacts and appraise them and sell them to those that wish to have them. So he's a merchant of sorts, then? Of sorts, I do, yes, I do believe so. Hmm. Very well. I suppose you we wouldn't mind parting with one of those uh, cigars, would you? Oh, heavens. Uh, where are my manners? Uh, here. Uh, my name is Rooster. Rooster Wizzlestein. Rooster Wizzlestein, yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. My, my daughter has spoken uh, quite a bit about you. I do believe I'll be uh, assisting you tomorrow. Yes, lovely lass. Yes, she takes quite well after her mother, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> is he is he an elf? Yes. Oh, he's an older, very old elf. No, not very, very old. He's he's def he's he definitely looks middle aged though. Hmm. Ah, okay. Well, uh, thank you, gentlemen, for your time. I'm sure I'll be seeing a lot more of you in the in the future. Uh, if you don't mind, I, I'm going to go have some words with some of the other folks around here. Uh, absolutely. May, may I offer you a light, my boy? Oh, of course. Thank you. He takes out, uh, like, just kind of holds out his finger and a uh, bit of flame spurts from the top of it. There you are. Nothing like a bit of the old arcane, is there? Hey, what? I'll say. This is good. <laughs> yes, quite. I, I, I do believe we gathered it from... Uh, our very own private stock. He kind of waves his finger and the flame goes away. Well, do enjoy yourself, boy. And uh, again, thank you for your service. You're very welcome. And a good evening to you as well. Very nice evening to you. I kind of straight for Loxley. All right. So you walk up to him as he's telling a story. So there I was in the middle of the tomb. And the old beast stared down at me. But I saw my prize glittering around its neck, and I said, Monster! How about a bit of a game? And the crowd goes, ooh, as you rush in. I, I, I walk up right behind him. I just look, look down, hoping he doesn't notice me. It's just cigar smoke spilling from my mouth. Oh, he definitely knows you. Uh, do you mind your... Uh... Breathing down my neck, sir. And he, uh, he looks back at me again. I beg your forgiveness. I hold up my hand. Wolfgang Connolly. Ah, oh, do excuse us, people. Do excuse us. This here man is a hero. He kind of he shakes your hand. I shake his. Just grip it a little bit. Go ahead and roll a perception check. <laughs> Something personal, kid. 15. 
Ooh, you managed to catch it as he, uh, while he's like gripping your hand, you catch out of the corner of your eye as he's sliding something into your pocket. It looks like a slip of paper. And then he gives you kind of a knowing glance as in, oh, you got me. Hmm. Kind of, it kind of gives you like a bit of an eyebrow raise. Well, to what do I owe the pleasure, Mr. Connolly? Well, I've heard quite about you, Mr. Loxley. And I've heard quite a bit about you. Yes, it seems after my family moved out of town, you uh, occupied our homestead. Well. Heard, heard you're in the mercantile business, in the business of uh, acquiring and selling fantastical objects. Yes, I fancy myself a bit of adventure every now and again. He winks at one of the women that's been staring at him who just kind of, like, fans herself. Well, uh, you know, it, when your family left, it, it was quite the shame. Uh, but, you know, that, that house sat's just uninhabited for years. It'd be a shame for it to not hold any footsteps, am I right? So when the time came and the crown was finally partitioned in order to put it up for bid, I put in my bid, and, well, the... Number one and number two just didn't seem to find the funds when it was necessary, and I got it for quite the steal. Kind of smiles. Really? Yes. How attached are you to my house? Well, it contains all of my stuff, so I'd say pretty attached. To the tune of how much, exactly? Oh, Mr. Connolly, you are quite the character. But let me assure you, it's my house. He says, kind of just staring at you. If you do wish to uh, discuss it further, though, you're more than welcome to drop by. I'm sure you could tell me quite a bit about the old place that I don't know. Just right at his feet. I'm sure we'll be in touch. Have a good mm -hmm. evening, Mr. Lockley. You as well, Mr. Connolly. He smiles as he turns back to the crowd and stomps out your cigar. So no, I, 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 I like blue... <laughs> no, I, I, did, I blew smoke at his feet. Is what I did. Oh, you blew smoke at his feet. Gotcha. Yeah, he, he doesn't he's call blowing smoke anything. up my ass. There you go. Ah... I get it. All right, Osmo, you're oh, dancing oh, with the Lady Ven. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna cut to Denier in the library. I will eventually. Okay. He takes his time getting there. Okay. Okay. Roll me a performance check as you're dancing. Oh, do I have to? I'm just so naturally nimble on my feet. Mm, I'll allow a Dex check. <laughs> oh, you will. Yes. Yay! That actually makes me really happy. Oh fuck! It's a ten. You're a little clumsy. You've definitely never waltzed before. I'll tell you that much. Uh, she She's kind of trying to guide you along, though. You're shuffling and stuttering. Haven't done this much before, have you? Uh, to forgive me, usually when I uh, dance with a blade in my hand and it's uh, away from someone with a blade in theirs. Mm-hmm. She says, just kind of, uh, she What's says, up? just like, hey, like I've, I've been around people like you. So, how long have you been working, uh, for uh, Madame Tia. Uh, better part of 20 years now, I'd say. It's been mm. a true honor, and I've learned quite much from the lady. Yes, forgive me. Here's a question. Have I ever seen her when I used to live in the city? Give me a, give me a general intelligence check. Okay. Oof. 13. Mm-hmm. You think you you think you've seen the uh, you've definitely seen the silver lady before, just kind of like out and about, and you've seen a person towing along with her. That might have been Ven. Oh. I, I lived my whole life in the city that I left a few months ago. I was curious if you could uh, if you heard anything about the incident that took place that triggered it. Hmm. Judging by your type. I'm going to give her an insight roll. I'm guessing it's a more shadowy business. At the time it was, but, uh, you know, people change. 
Well, if you're looking for crime, there's no short of it here. Oh, I'm not looking for crime. I got a legitimate job now. Of course, of course. He wings. Do. I was curious if you knew what happened to anyone who else was in that incident. If any of them were. <coughs> oh, sorry, one second. Um, I need some co- I need some water in my mouth here. Sorry. Um, no worries. It's a rough voice to stick with. I'm just curious if anyone else was apprehended for that incident a few months back, and if they are, if they're still in prison or jail. You'd have to be a touch more specific, I'm afraid. Our ears run deep, but we've had many things happen over the past 20 years. Uh, Asmo, like, whispers in her ear uh, the incident that happened. It's part of his backstory. Go ahead. Whisper it. I was working a job with me and my old gang. With a bunch of other gangs. We were guard- working for a group. We didn't know what we were doing. We were told to guard this place. And then some guy came in there hacking and slashing. And I ran as fast as I could. Because this guy was a machine. He just went through everybody. I wanted to know if everyone died or if anyone from my gang made it. I do recall... Hold on, let me see. I do recall hearing about events like that. It was... It was in one of the caves near the outskirts of town, right? Exactly. Hmm. A lot of us. It wasn't just one gang. It was a bunch of them all at the same time. I don't remember exactly who was in charge of that raid in particular. I believe it was some lord from the northern lands who's... But... <clears throat> I don't recall a name. I All I remember is that... Quite a few people died that day. I don't think anybody walked out of there, though I guess you did. Uh, Well, thanks anyways. Appreciate you at least trying to help. I'll try to keep my ear to the ground. Uh, They usually point up, so that'll be interesting to see. (laughs) She She kind of scoffs and gives you like a little bit of a shove. Denier, you found your way to the uh, library. Is there anything in particular you wanted to look for? Uh, the first thing I would like to do upon getting there, once okay, I you... get there, I close the door. And you I get would... in there, you close the door. Give me a perception check. Absolutely. That is a 17. There's two people fucking in the corner. I mean, oh. you're not sure that they're actually doing that, but they're definitely down to something. Hmm. I turn my back to them, and uh, I go a little bit away from them, uh, pretty much if I'm trying to give them the the vibe of, I won't bother you, you don't bother me. They have not noticed you. They rolled a fucking nat one on their perception. <laughs> they, they probably will, because I begin casting Detect Magic. Is that a loud spell? Uh, let me... Let it's me a big check. pop! Pow! Let's see. I am double checking for you right now. Detect magic is verbal and somatic. Okay, so you start talking. I'm going to give them another perception check. Okay. The one's like, ah! uh, I am on the other side of the room with my back to them. Yeah, and uh, the the man's voice picks up. Do you mind? It's a very familiar voice. Well, shit, we have to get out of here. <laughs> Go back to your own story, Panic. Okay. Yeah. Ha ha. Uh, whose voice is it? Uh, it's Mr. Crowley. Oh, sh- okay. Oh, it's you. I um. am. I am sorry, sir. I did not know that you were here. I was trying to give you both some privacy i will leave right now no that's fine it's fine um you oh shit this is gonna be awkward i i daniela slaps him in the face she as she like storms out never mind adrian (laughs) damn ah whatever Ugh, he's just kind of sitting there shirtless. 
I'm I'm sorry. I had no idea that you were in here. Oh, I'm not a shy man. She's a little stuffy, I guess. I don't know. What brings you this way during my soiree? Very few people like to wander back this way. Well, you made the offer at the library, and I'm not exactly the most socially adept person. Clearly, he says. I was trying to give you your privacy, and I had my back to you. But, yeah, I'm not the most socially adept person, so I figured if I stayed over here minded my own business and left you alone, you would mind your own business and have your enjoyment, and we could both uh, use the same space. Well, I assure you, privacy uh, in the future might mean just turning uh, turning a bit more than away for a little bit. He kind of slaps you on the shoulder. He reaches down at the table and grabs that cask of brandy that he had upstairs and just starts drinking out of it. Ah, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the island that I was from, uh, you know, everybody knows everybody. Ah, yes, the wild lands to the south. Indeed. The tales of your people, no pun intended, I suppose. Mm Mm-hmm. So, what is so urgent in this library that you, uh, must be here. Well, you came, you, you offered it, you... <laughs> I know, phrasing, I know. <laughs> ha ha! You, you offered the position of to look around the library, and since we are already here, I am not doing it on purpose, I swear to God! That makes it funny. <laughs> It is a job. Well, you allowed me to come into this office, into this library, and given that the party was going on, I am not a socially adept man. I figured I would come here, see if there was any kind of books that piqued my fancy, and take a little bit of time to read, while those other two, who are far better dealing with people than I am, you know, do their thing, I figured if there's any books on magic in here, I could look at it. If there's any kinds of, uh, say, for example, diagrams, any kind of spells inside of these books, maybe copy them down into my own spell book and try to become a better magician. Well, my thrice great grandfather, he uh, studied under Arcanos himself, if I recall correctly. Surely he must have some tomes sitting around here somewhere. Great grandfather used to take very good care of him, as did grandfather and my father before they passed. That would be absolutely so, wonderful. Yeah, I have no fucking clue where they might be, though, so feel free to look around. If they're magical, uh, I could potentially find them. Yeah, if you're under the effects of detect magic right now, uh, you do that, but it doesn't seem to work. Your mm-hmm. spell does not seem to go off at all. Mm, are you trying to use magic within my home? Uh, a detect magic spell. I'm going to guess and say that you have your house is filled with abjuration magic in order to defend it against uh, scrying spells, I take uh, it. I pay a person for that, so yeah, that sounds about right. That's what I pay the fees for. And they do a very good job, from what I can tell. I should hope for the coin I pay the bastards. Really? Uh... From the school or a different sect? No, oh, they're f- graduates that need their own work, I suppose. People that fancy themselves nobility, trying to suck up to nobility in order to one day become nobility, and the cycle continues. Yes. That would make sense. Your aspirations don't seem so low, though. My, you. my goals, I have but one simple goal. I want to return home. (laughs) I want to see my family again. Don't we all? And I believe that magic will aid me in that task. Will bring me one step closer. I can't imagine it wouldn't. He holds out the decanter towards you. Denier takes it. Um, Go on, it won't kill you. Fair enough. And he'll take a drink of it. 
All right, roll me a constitution save. Okay. Meow. Uh, let me see. Constitution save, 11. Whew, this stuff's got a bit of a kick to it. You're not drunk, but man, did that, like, you took a bit more in than you expected. Like, you're not much of a drinker. You've had that honey mead, and that's something that you could sip on quite frequently. Uh, this, you tried to drink like that, and oh, oh boy, was that a, a bit of an issue. You definitely feel <coughs> a bit of a buzz going around your head and a burn in your throat. <clears throat> Gotta admit, this is a, a bit stronger than what I've tasted before, but it is good. Mm, yes, takes the edge off. <sighs> kind of, like, takes a few glugs in a row. <sighs> Piece of junk. Throws it and shatters it against the wall as it's polished off. Ah! That belonged to my grandfather. Mm, the, uh, the decanter. And, and the thing I hit with it. He points at the oil painting on the wall. I'll have somebody come by and fix that. Whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure uh, it can be mended fairly easily. Yes, I do believe so. I'll have to have the... <sighs> God damn it, this is going to be a whole process. He says as he realizes exactly what it takes to get something magically mended in a house that can't have magic done to it. Whatever. It is a shot in the dark. Um, I don't know if it would be wise to do or if it's possible to do, but why not take the painting and the decanter outside of the house and the grounds before magically mending it and bring it back in? Mm, well, I'm not going to do it myself. I just let... He, he takes a bell out of his pocket and rings it. Uh, you ready for your cleanup, sir? Oh, she left. Uh... Anything I can help? I let them handle it. Fair enough. Uh, should I should I leave, sir? Huh? Oh, you're still here. Um, more brandy. Yes, sir. He walks out of the room. All right. The night continues to pass as you. Make with your frivolities. Is there anything else that anybody would like to do in the residence? I mean, oof. stuff Asma would like to do, but he can't. He knows he shouldn't. Well, if you stop yourself from doing it, Ooh, he will. All right. Yeah, you continue on and you drink, you make merry, you chat it up with the nobles who are all fascinated by your. Not, not only, like, the fact that you're here, but, you know, who you are, what you did up north. Anybody that you're willing to tell a story to would gladly hear it. They seem fascinated to have you here. You seem like a huge attraction in this party, actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll, if, uh, if he's willing, I'll pretty much uh, spend the evening in the library telling stories to Crowley. Uh, he seems completely disinterested. But as you're looking, or if you're looking for any specific books, uh, I'll have you roll a investigation check. Okay. Uh, the it, the books that I was looking for is basically either anything that might have uh, like a like a spell inside of the book, or anything based on religion, uh, namely the Bleeding God, or any known religion. Go ahead and roll the investigation check. Okay. Investigation. Nope. Seven. There are a lot of books in here. It, it would take you all night just to try to go through all of them. Mm -hmm. Like, it's insane. A lot of these are fiction books. Some of these are cookbooks. Uh, some of them are, you know, about, you know, raising, like, raising cattle, having land. Some of them even seem to be written by the Crowleys themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still Nothing in, not, not, a, not a lot here that's going to help you out on your way, but perhaps in a future visit you might be able to attend something, and as the evening winds down, you end up back up at Phoenix's, uh, the Phoenix Perch, and you rest for the night. Okay. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Now you're awoken in the morning by the sun outside, peeking through your windows. Uh, you get a knock bad. on the door. 
Who's the door? same the same everybody's door. The same serving staff is there offering you breakfast and anybody who wishes to use the baths. They have uh, robes and towels. Asmo's okay. He's just gonna put on his clothing. Wipe off his face with a damp cloth. And uh yeah. Now you guys make your feed and you prep for the day and waiting for you in the lobby is Venariel. Big pardon? Huh. Are you cut out? Waiting for you in the lobby is Venariel. Morning. I guess I'm the only one up right now. Uh yeah. Okay. Well, I'm no, you're you're all, you're you're all up unless one of you. Oh, wants I just to no sleep no in. one said anything. So. <laughs> We're waiting for you. Uh, yeah, Wolfgang probably gets up and takes a bath and gets ready and stuff. Yeah, Wolfgang takes a bit longer as the rest of you are getting ready. Uh, my father is still amidst preparations. It'll be probably a few hours until he's ready. And as Wolfgang walks down into the lobby after getting all freshly dressed up, his clothes, uh, the clothes that you would have left, your adventuring gear, has been mended and laundered by the staff. They hmm. laundered it like money. Really well. Yeah, it seems very nicely patched up, too. Like, any any scars you might have had in it seem to be sealed. It seems almost magical. Mm. Probably because it was. Hmm. Ooh. Yeah, spectacular. As was got on his gear, he, he was downstairs chatting with, uh, chatting with Van. That was good dancing with you last night, Van. Yes, I have had worse partners, she says with a bit of a keen smile to her face. Oh, you compliment me so. I'm so glad that I just got in below the bar. <laughs> As I said, my father should be ready to transport you in just a few hours, but uh, if you have any last business that you need to take care of around town, please take care of it now because it'll be... A bit more difficult getting back, she says uh, with a, ba a bit of bated breath. I was hoping that Denier gets up. Hey, Wolfgang, what time did Denier go to bed at last night? Uh, Wolfgang, you would have known Denier did not go to bed. He was up all night muttering to himself, and at certain points he was openly weeping in his room, since you can hear what happens in his room and yours. Um... He had a bit of a rough one last night. I think he was hitting the sauce a little too hard. Yeah, he seems out of control. Huh. We should kick him out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Denier does walk downstairs. He looks tired. And... Uh, you're, you are uh, fatigued since you decided not to sleep at all last night. Mm -hmm. So you'll be rolling uh, checks with disadvantage. Fair enough. And he is, he appears to be holding his left hand, which at the moment that you guys see him, it looks like his left hand is shaking. And as he holds it and rubs it, it slowly stops. The hell happened to you last night? <whistles> he like, Asmo well, snaps his fingers like, come on, what happened to you last night? I tried to sleep. And you failed? All I could do laying in the bed is just replay it in my mind over and over and over when the, it was taken from me. What, the party? Thought, no, the gym. You're saying all of this in front of Venariel? Yes. Mm. And I thought of every single scenario that I could have potentially kept it, but and I thought of I kept on thinking of everything that it used to do, how it used to keep me calm, and how it kept me feeling safe. And the fact, and even now, you guys can see his hand is drifting towards the spell component pouch, where he always kept the gym. And he absentmindedly, you know, goes into it. And the look of realization on his face that, once again, it's gone. He pulls his hand out and he clutches it again. Ven looks visibly concerned. Um, so yes, uh, uh, please stop by the uh, manor in uh, w within the next few hours. I uh, I have some business I must attend to. Uh, she just kind of nods and hurries her way out. 
That's where you scared off the girl. Hmm? No. Jesus. Is there uh, anything that, uh, any business any of you want to take care of, or do you just want to head to the no, tower? No, just, just head out to the tower. We got nothing really else to do. We got everything done yesterday, for me at least. You got all yep. your stuff done. Uh, Wolfgang, no concern about visiting your manor. Did you ever check that piece of paper in your pocket? Uh, I will now. Yeah. Um, you probably would have when you got back home. It's just a little piece of paper yeah. that says, uh, we should talk. But you did talk. Uh, you know what? I'll think I'll go and do that real quick. All right. So you guys are going to make a, a pit stop at Wolfgang's childhood home? Please describe it to us, Nick. All right. Uh, you remember as you were walking up to Crowley's Manor for the first time, uh, there was a house that was just plated entirely with gold. Like, it looked like it was wood at one point and actually would have looked rather simple compared to a lot of the other homes. But now it is entirely plated with gold and blazoned with suns and just various odds and ends. It looks a bit garish, if I were to be frank. But, you know, to each their own style. And as you walk up... Uh, Wolfgang, one thing that kind of strikes your memory, the door knocker in the shape of a wolf with a little brass knocker and its mouth is also gilded now. I, I reach out and I go. The door opens. It's a uh, buxom, beautiful woman. Uh, yes? Uh, I'm looking for Mr. Loxley. Ah, yes, Mr. Loxley. Hold on. Uh, uh, he, he's, is he expecting you? I believe so, yes. Okay, well, uh, come on in then. Uh, Master Loxley, you have some visitors. Mm, thank you, love. A man in a uh, silken red robe stands at the top of a staircase that's also lined in gold uh there's a lot more natural wood in here though very worn and old uh clearly he does not have enough money to gild the entire structure although it's looking like he's starting to try like there are pieces of this house that are gold on the inside as opposed to you know the just the regular wood as he steps to the top of the staircase ah so you did get my message i was beginning to wonder Mm. Welcome to my home. Sort of narrows his eyes. He slides down the banister. Whoop, hops down at your feet. Ah, afraid we weren't formally introduced last night. Darrington Loxley at your service. He holds out his hand with a winning smile and a pencil-thin mustache. Darrington, huh? Yes, you can call me Daring, though. Continue okay, smiling at you. To each their own. Greetings. I uh, believe we've met Mr. Connolly and your associates. I don't believe we've been acquainted, though. Darrington Loxley holds out his hand. As I was just leaning against the door that they walked in, pleasure to meet you. All right, a man of few words. I like that. I like that. And you, my uncomfortable and tired-looking... Cat friend. Daenerys is just staring at him. Silent, but staring. Well, joyful little bunch you are. I'm here to think I was going to offer you a bit of coin. A bit of coin? Hmm? For what, exactly? Yes, uh, first of all, I must show my gratitude at first for not discussing... Uh, the events of yesterday, shall we say. Discretion is a good part of my business, and don't worry, I haven't told anybody either. Although, I am aware of who's hired me. And who might that be? Well, it doesn't take much to know who's connected to whom around these parts. And while it did go through a third and fourth party, it wasn't very hard to tie it back to, well... The royals themselves. Specifically, Tia, I believe, the silver lady. 
Hmm. I assure you the... I assure you my pay was specifically for discretion. And I mean nothing by it. Although my... The platinum was for the discretion here. This is in a good faith. He hands you back your uh, gold from yesterday. Take it. About how about how much is that again? Uh, it was, I believe, three hundred gold for the. Was it three or five hundred? It was five hundred. Yeah, it was five hundred gold for the shard. He hands it back to you. Now, if you're interested, I do have a bit of work that you might be able to facilitate for me. Oh, really? What might that be? Well, those in the know know me as a man who can acquire things, be it attention or certain artifacts. In this case, I need a very, very specific piece of paper. And I think you, Lot, might have the inroads for me to get it. Go of on. Course. He yells from the, the, the ways away. He, he, eyes, he eyes over at you. Yes. Indeed. Discretion is a big part of my business, but seeing as the company involved already knows who I am and knows my reputation, I do believe they would do quite a bit to try to stop me, futile as it may be. But if I were to get this from, say, a third party such as yourselves, it would make the job easier and I would be able to rest a little bit more after last night's events. I require a copy of a page from a certain spell tome. A client is willing to pay quite a bit of money for that and I'm willing to cut you in on the take. Oh, uh, you, you cut out. What was that? Oh, sorry. A client of mine is looking for a very specific spell from a very specific spell tome, and if you help acquire it for me, I'm willing to cut you in on the take. How much of a cut are we getting? Mm, I could cut you in at 500 apiece. A fair amount of money. What's, What's that? Totally like 20% of what you're getting paid for? Hmm, I have... No, necessary. Let's let's say. Let's say yes. Well, you seem to be a man of great wealth. After all, you have this splendid, magnificent manner, all gold-plated and dressed to the nines, and all that. Ah, uh, splendid, splendid man of great talent, great taste as well. Uh, he kind of nods to you and smiles. This, this. Seems to be pretty high on your priority list, and it seems a lot of people are gunning for it. How about maybe cutting us in on 40% of that contract? I like that deal. <laughs> Roll persuasion. Oh, yeah. 14. All right. As a show of goodwill, let's say 75, 750 gold apiece. I like, what it. Is, I like that. I like what that. is this tome and what page do you want? <laughs> I like you, boys. He holds out a sheet of paper. Now, remember, discretion is all a part of this business. As he, unfail as he unveils it, it uh, shows a arrangement of runes. Uh, I want you all to give me an arcana check to see if you can figure out exactly what this is. Oh, God. And Denir, that's at a disadvantage, but that's a nine regardless, so. Oh, yeah. That's five. Uh, Arcana. Da, 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 seven. Oh, yeah. None, none of you know what this is, but you think if you kept this piece of paper on you, you could at least, you know, mix and match whatever these runes might happen to go to. Yes, it seems the Whistlesteens have quite a wealth of knowledge within that spire of theirs, and... It is so unfortunately difficult to enter. 
Now, I have a client that's looking for a copy of the page with this specific spell on it. I can't make hide nor hair of it myself, but for the money they're offering, I don't mind. And to further simplify the matters, they won't even know it's gone. He produces from his vest, or he produces from a desk, a series of blank sheets of paper. And to the average eye, it looks nothing more than a sheet of paper. However, he places it on top of a newspaper and lifts it back up, and kind of like Silly Putty, all of the information that was on that page is now on this piece of paper. It uh, has a way of collecting knowledge. Kind of throws that piece away. That one's, wor that one's ruined. So I'll present each of you one of these sheets, and if you can get me that spell, you'd have my gratitude and a fair... 750 gold. If we do it really well, do we get a tip on top of that? <laughs> I assure you, the 750 is me being quite kind and generous. How would I get a... Uh... Like one of your lamps. One of the lamps just jacked in gold. <laughs> sure. He kind of shrugs. Beautiful. You mind telling us exactly what this spell does? I have no clue. It's not necessarily my concern as to what it does. I'm just paid to acquire it. Well, very well then. He hands you the sheets of paper. Pleasure doing business, and, oh, I assure you, if you do inform the Whistlesteens of my intentions, it won't make a difference. Huh. How do you suppose? Usually when people get something stolen from them, they're like, hey, don't do that. <laughs> my boys, if the Crown knows who I am, do you think anybody is going to stop me? He kind of smiles. Noted. Well, have yourself a good day. You as well. He kind of Asma. waves as his uh, robe kind of blows in the breeze a little. Asma opens the door and just walks out and like kind of like gesturing the guys to follow him. Denier leaves. Doesn't say a word the entire time, but leaves. Asma says to uh, Wolfgang, so, uh, uh, that guy, you and him seem to have uh, what I can only describe as an Asmogaric tension. I wouldn't put it that quite quite that deep. He is squatting in my house. He is painting it all sorts of foolish gold and silver and stuff like that. And I want it back. It's as simple as that. Let us get a little bit further away before we begin talking. Okay. That's what makes me gar yeah, like, Speaking what of Garak, none of you have seen him since you uh, left the ceremony. Yeah, I just assume he's working. Doing push ups, sit ups, and running 10 kilometers a day. He does do those things. <laughs> so, uh, Denier waits until they get a ways away before he speaks again. I'm not going to work for that man. I'd sooner make his head explode. Here's what I propose that we do. Take the runes, inform the Whistlesteens, have them create a doctored version of the spell with one, maybe two runes off. We take the copy, we give it, we get paid. He gets in shit from his third, his third party buyer. And then after that, we blow his head off. Uh... Well, uh, as, aside from the blatant murder, uh, I agree with your plan. I was thinking the same thing, actually, Denier. That's really like uh, in kind of insight, uh, Denier, right now. Go for it, Denier. If you want to hide how you're feeling, go ahead and ride, uh, roll deception with disadvantage. Yeah, this is a little this is... hiding. Uh, he does not like this guy. This guy stole from him in front of the royal palace. This was money that he could have used to get back home, and this guy stole it, and he's acting like he did nothing wrong. Denier hates this man. It's just this. 
it's the I guess out of characters is the murder out of nowhere is kind of like just really contrary to Denier's character up to this point. That's why. Yeah. That it's just, just like you, want... to, you also have to look. The gem's gone, and the gem's been keeping hit Denier calm for so long. The sudden lack of a gem, you know, sudden fluctuations in his uh, emotional state. Hair standing on end. Your hair that's, or his? That's where I'm. Uh, that's where I'm coming from with, uh, with the. Uh, you know how Denier's all harebrained and you know, going everywhere right now. Well, we well, have to be careful about this. He's a very rich man, very uh, Besides, very well connected. It looks like if we're planning on screwing him, which we are, uh, we've got to be careful. We've got to be smart because if we aren't. He's probably going to send some goons after us with that vast yeah. amount of wealth. Maybe peel Maybe. a couple of those gold plates off and buy some as, mercs as, with it. I just want gestures at the house they're walking away from. A guy doesn't get that house by being stupid. Besides, he probably would have some way of knowing if we fucked with the spell anyways. So, I'd rather not even do the job at all if you're that worried about this guy. Well, he said He said he didn't know what the spell did. He was just acquiring it for someone. Give me time where I can actually think straight and I'll do research on it and I'll figure out what it does. Should we inform the Wizzlesteins? I would say so. Eh. I haven't met them yet, so take it one step at a time. I met the, uh, the patriarch of the family last night at the Shindig. Oh, shoot. What was he like? Uh, old. Smoked cigars. Mm -hmm. uh, we met his daughter, actually. No, yeah, it's... Right. Who, who's, her, who's his daughter? Uh, name. Name comes to mind. Uh, ben. Ben, yeah, so right. I was, I was looking through my notes. Asmo just kind of just does a shocked reaction. Oh, my. Yeah, well, then we're not going to do that to them. Ben's a sweet girl. She's also very pretty. To cast detect magic. What? Okay. I'm using my uh, angelic sights to give get my free detect magic out. All right. Uh, you get detect magic out. Uh, obviously, uh, Asmo's finger is glowing just because that ring there. Uh, all the magic items that you're aware of are glowing as appropriate. And as you get toward the spire itself, that thing is just illuminating. It is a beacon of magic. Uh, looking back at uh, Wolfgang's old house, I guess I guess it would be Darrington's house now. Does that glow at all? No, it seems quite calm. There's there's a subtle energy to it, but it doesn't seem outwardly arcane. Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly checking for like bugs or magic devices on us that we didn't really that we didn't really uh have on us beforehand no you don't notice anything okay all right and i dispel that all right as you approach the whistlesteen's tower you begin walking through the park that leads towards this massive spire sitting in the middle of the city and you get to the base of the tower and there's no door Oh, it's one of these things. Okay. Uh, Asmo just bangs on the... Asmo just takes uh, one of his swords out and just takes the hilt and just bangs against the rock. <laughs> We're here! Tink, 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 tink. Yep. Solid. Just banging on it like it's a door. Bang, bang, because he remembers the that one secret entrance we walked through. He's assuming it's something similar to that. Yep. Bang, bang, no, bang. No response. Well, I'm out of options. I don't really know what else is uh, to do here. If each of you are unaware, go ahead and roll a general intelligence check. 18. 12. 8. It's All right. Six. Wolfgang, Wolfgang uh, you guys were given a rune. Yeah, we had that thing that we were supposed to present to the door. No, but there is no door. Well, it's the spire, whatever. Denier the... digs into his pocket, he takes a stone, hands it over to Wolfgang. All right, I hold the stone out towards the spire. All right, it begins to pulse with some 
magic energy and the... As you put it closer to the spire, a portal seems to appear. And it looks like it goes into a nice little entryway. Uh, magic's one hell of a thing. Asmo rolls on through. Yeah, you slide on in. Uh, this place smells very old and musty, like an old library. And there's suits of armor just kind of walking around. A couple of them step up to you and cross swords in front of the uh, main stairway, spiral stairway that leads up. Shink. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, they, they, they can come through. They stand down and walk to the edge of the uh, stairway. Shink. Come on up. Uh, I'll introduce you to my family. Uh, Ven is standing there at the uh, second, or kind of like leaning her head down the spiral staircase, waving you guys up. Alright. Uh, I climb on up. Yep. Yeah, you make your way up, and as you do, you walk past stories of... This looks like it's part of the academy, but it definitely looks like some of the more advanced students are here. Uh, various rooms with people tinkering with various spells. There's books floating left and right, uh, potions being mixed. And as you make your way up to Ven, uh, she's standing there with a really old-looking woman. And uh, the man that you met last night, Denier. Uh My friends, this is my father, Rooster Wizzlestein, and this is my grand, great grandmother, great great grandmother. Sorry, Zalasel. Hey, yes. Hello. Zalasel. Hey. Zalasel. Uh, how do you spell that? Z a l i s e l. I'm going to tell you just to spell it all phonetically. However, it helps you to pronounce it. Zalasel. What was her dad's name? Rooster. 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 The big cock. Got it. Very nice to meet you, boys. I've heard quite a bit from young Ven about you. Really? What have, uh, what have you heard about me? Mm, that you're a terrible dancer, but a nice fellow. Well, oh, this... <laughs> now, I suppose you'll be... And then making your way northward, correct? Yes, I believe we are for the job. We're heading to, uh, God, what was the name of the city? I tried writing it down. Uh, Mitternacht. Mitternacht. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid. Well, uh, my, my grandson Rooster, he, here, he will be able to get you. He's the finest teleportation expert in... All of the lands? Mm, yes, quite, though I am afraid I'm not able to uh, transport you to places I have uh, not seen myself, or if you've not seen them. But I can uh, get you going in the proper direction, at least, eh, what? Well, so you've been to Meternacht. What kind of place mm. is it? What can no, you tell no, me? No, I've, I've never been up north, I'm afraid. I've been down here my whole life, ever since... Well, that does, that's not helpful. Well, I will get you closer to the border unless you'd like to journey up there by foot, eh, what? No, no, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of nods. Um, have all the preparations been made? Ven is kind of looking very nervously back and forth. That you guys. Uh, yeah, we've made some preparations. Uh, there is something I wanted to tell you, first of all, though. Oh? Do you have any business with one uh, Darrington Lockley? Loxley? A bit. Not good, huh? I cross paths with many people in this game. The lady keeps many circles, and I too must keep those circles so yes we've had run-ins from time to time and uh i took the opportunity to hire him to grab your attention so to speak really you you hired him to do that Slow well not me over. specifically i i went through a few intermediaries but doubtless he's aware well, I tell you, he is very interested in your family. Oh, I'm sure he is. He's 
made quite a few passes, she says, kind of like looking to the side. Well, I he think he's done making passes, and he's taking a more aggressive approach to get what he wants out of you. She kind of looks at shocked. Well, I, I don't believe he's that type of man. Well, we do. We met him earlier this morning. She's kind of like looking back and forth a little more nervous now. Okay. Do you have any spell books laying around? A, a, like she just kind of goes like stunned for a minute. Okay, we were on totally different wavelengths. Um, yes, several. Well, he's trying to steal spells from you. You don't say. And I hold out the piece of paper that that he wants us to copy the runes onto. Hmm. That's quite a powerful one. Well, he'll have a hard time getting it from here. Uh, I assume he sent you to fetch it for him, as you'd be able to get in. Indeed. And I don't plan on giving that squatter anything. Well, it's much appreciated that you brought this to our attention. We'll have a uh, great-grandmother. Mm, yes. Um, the tome, is it uh, in a safe place? Oh, my, yes. Oh, I don't know anybody who could possibly get to it except for myself. Well, I don't think that this will be too much of an issue. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. The thing is, I also want my house back. And he's squatting in it. Doing God's know what. Yes, she says, kind of like looking to the side. How... Unfortunately, that's a bit more of a process, I imagine, unless, well, he should be defamed in some way, shape, or form that would oust him from his position. I don't see anything legally that we can do for it. Even though uh, you've got three witnesses saying that he's ready to steal spells from you and send them off to who knows what. He's been doing such things for many years and many people are aware of it. However, he's never been caught and there's never been a shred of evidence to attach him to it. Uh, so you're saying three people saying it would just be circumstantial. In the court of public opinion, I'm afraid so. He is quite the socialite, shall we say. Oh. Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, I've got an idea. Uh, Go on. We'll, work, we'll work on it when, I, when we get back. But if there's any way to use maybe, maybe thaumaturgy, something to capture his voice as he's saying it, and then be able to play it back. A Kenku, maybe. Hmm. A rare breed, but possible. Hair of the words coming to the man's voice himself would be pretty damning. Hmm. Indeed, if he isn't able to put that off as mere conjuration or imitation. Perhaps a zone of truth spell, then. Like I said, we can work on it when you get back. He didn't give us a time limit for this, so just watch your books while we're we'll gone. Keep a, we'll keep our eyes on it. <laughs> yes, very much so. So, Rooster, I do believe you've prepared the circle. What does yes, this spell uh, do? Oh, that particular spell? Well, mm -hmm. it has the capabilities of doing many different things. Depends on the user's wish, I suppose. What? <laughs> and his eyes start getting really big. Yes, I'm afraid that is a piece of information that was passed down to my family from Arkanos directly before he left. Well... Certainly don't want that getting into anybody's hands, then. <laughs> no, indeed, and no, it shan't, my dear boy. Well, 
one thing at a time, I suppose. We'll get this taken care of first. We'll get Loxley taken care of when we get back. Um, Ven is kind of shifting through her pockets. Before you go, the lady ordered me to to give you this. She says as she holds out a sack. I don't like doing this, especially after seeing you and how you've been. But I trust my lady and I trust her will. She hands the sack out towards you, Denier. All right. Denier reaches out and he retrieves the sack. I need you to make a will save. Ooh, okay. At disadvantage. That is probably going to be bad. Uh, 11. It's home. It's here. It's here. You reach into the bag. You pull it out. It's that gem. It's back. It's back. You begin to feel calm again. He rips the bag open, pulls out the gem, and holds it, holds it high. And the look of a light and joy is back on his face. He grips it firmly. You've been walking around with that for seven years to see the toll that it's put on you. My my lady asks that you use this to find other pieces and to return them to us. I pleaded with her not to do it after what I saw this morning. But she has faith in you. So I'm just going to Try to not think about it and assume you were just having a bad day. But you too. She looks over at Wolfgang and Osmo. You keep an eye on him. And if he should... If something should happen, I assume you will do what must be done for the safety of the realm. Asma claps uh, Denier on the shoulder. I hear that, buddy. Life just got more interesting for you. Pats him a couple times. <laughs> yeah, Venariel looks pale. She looks like almost sick having handed that over. All right, Father, please. Uh... Yes, yes, quite. Um, I, uh, the preparations have been made in your town of Amberglade, I do believe, that shall connect this circle that you're standing in, and he points at the runes on the ground that appear to be surrounding you, to the town itself. Uh, It should bring you there. I've always hit my mark, at least within uh, 50 meters or so. Just don't teleport. So, like, I've I've heard about teleportation. Does this, do we, like, just appear there, or is it, like, we just shoot really fast there? How does this work? Yeah, I'd say everybody experiences it a bit differently. I, I would describe it as a, a bit of a warm bath, bathing in arcane energy, and you arrive nice and refreshed in your next location. That sounds really pleasant. I ex- um, I'm excited for this now. Oh, you should have one of these, dear. She hands uh, Wolfgang a scroll. Uh, just in case. Now, are you uh, quite ready? Oh, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready as I'll ever be. All right. So uh, as soon as you uh, find your way to the north and present that uh, scroll to the r- royal up there, then I believe we shall have you back. Uh, yes, hey, what? Uh, here we go. He starts chanting, and the uh, rune around you begins to glow. Denier will whisper something into Vin's ear real quick. And uh, she's nowhere back. near you. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, sorry. She's in the back of the room, just kind of crossing her arms and looking kind of down, just like she's not happy with the situation that's unfolding. Fair enough. And as the rune begins to glow, the room starts to fade a bit black, and all of a sudden it's just this glowing, glowing ring around you. And finally you look down, you see it. The town of Amber Glade. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just as you left it. The land of eternal springtime. Looks a little smaller, though. 
You begin falling. You're about 100 feet in the air. Shit! As you start falling toward Amber Glade. Wolfgang's just got his hands in his pockets. Just assuming this is all part of the process. You do remember he did say that he always gets you there within about 50 meters or so. As I was trying to swim up. (laughs) Wolfgang, would you like to look at that scroll you got? Yeah. It's a scroll of Featherfall. Oh, I I (laughs) cast it. Yeah, as you're plummeting towards the earth, like, oh shit, shit. oh fuck! And then you like open that up, like the you read the enchantment, and poof, all of a sudden, you and anybody within reach of you, I think it's with, uh, I think it's five people within reach of you, can yeah, yeah, yeah. slow their descent. I assume you slow everybody's descent as you slowly make your way back down to the ground of Amber Glade safely. The scrolls text disappears as it disintegrates into the air. And you're home. Like that. The town of Amber Glade, right here. And you can begin your journey to finding your way northward next time on Roll With Me.